point. It is what it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 832 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 532 West Coast edition of the show. I'm your host, Mr. Tom Sotomayor. And this is your world. Yeah. Will I ever make it when I'm supposed to be here? That is, that'll never happen, motherfucker. That will never happen. This shit will go on air when it's supposed to go on air. Show me the cat facts, nigga. Show me the cat facts. This red shirt got me looking like a prisoner. Man, look how it's going up against my black skin. Talking about my black skin. Ladies and gentlemen, I have enjoyed the little vacation. We went up and saw the whole thing. I'm gonna tell you guys about what I saw up in Memphis, Memphis, had a good time in Memphis, I, I want to say something to y'all, and that uh, retarded boy, let me tell y'all something, and yes, Game Changer, this, all these shirts are for sale, just go to Sotomayor TV, the shirts are for sale, all of this stuff, go to Sotomayor TV, but I want to say something to you guys, it's sad that Troy Ingram is a retarded dude. And I don't have nothing against retarded people, but the boy is retarded. He is literally a retard. And that is a shame. Now you giving retards a bad name. And that's a difficult thing to do, but he's doing it. That's bad when you say you, you, you retarded to be retarded. You are retarded to be retarded. Just sit here and think about it. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the funniest thing about the life that we lead. We lead a life that is one of either progress or regress. We lead a life of one that is either creation or destruction. And then we have bystanders. That's why in superhero movies you always have this superhero and the evil villain. And the people around are who they fight for. If you look at it, it's just like God and the devil. Superhero, the villain, and the public is who they're fighting for. Religiously. And what you have here is a failure to communicate. And you got a lot of people who have spent their whole lives, time, and day fucking with people that they don't know. But I want y'all to understand something. Because I've come to understand. These people need a purpose. Either you want to be the savior, you want to be the villain, or you want to be saved. Life is full of one of three people. Which is why you have people who are on welfare, who want to stay there is why you have people who are on welfare who end up being Tyler Perry. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. And my casket drops. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome for welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mr. Tommy Sotomayor. This is 
your world. You can join us. I think we are broadcasting live on the um the YouTube now. I think we are. I think we're up there. And if we are, welcome. If you are over, if you're watching there, welcome. Thank you for joining the show. If this is your first time, which I've seen a lot of people in the thing say this is their first time, then welcome to you as well. The number is 347-989-8310. You can call and talk to us live. Tonight we will have Patrice Hollins live on the show, Playboy Playmate. And we're going to get her to uh, answer a few questions. Why does it seem like this motherfucking thing is right on top of my head? Is there a reason this bitch is in front of, uh, just on, in my face? I feel uncomfortable. No, I'm, I'm move it back. It's, it's, it's in my, it's in my grill. So let me see your grill. That's the wrong camera. I just don't feel comfortable with it in my face like that. It feels like I'm I'm confined, like I'm in a box. It's it's still not up high enough. Can you get it up? Like it's looking at my nuts. Eh, that's better. Give them headroom. Give me some headroom, bitch. Give me some headroom, bitch. So I can boom shaka like a boom. That's the sound of the 20 gauge. All right, guys, we're going to have a good show tonight because it's a simple topic. The topic of the show tonight is going to be just a simple question. Should so-called black issues be discussed, especially in the type of forum that I am using, an open forum, a great Western forum, where... Everyone can join the debate. Everyone can get in on the debate. It's a mass debate. Is it wrong for these type of things to be said out in the open? Or should they? Should they be relegated to black people talking amongst themselves and not letting the rest of the world know your issue. Also, another question is, is it wrong to let other races of people in on the discussion? I have been accused several times of being an Uncle Tom because I don't cut anyone out of the discussion, and there are reasons for that, and I will discuss that later. I want to bring up something in today's Is It Just Me's. I'm ready for the Is It Just Me if, if you guys are ready for it because I have a lot on my mind. I want to get to the phone calls too and uh, bring you guys on. The number is 347-989-8310. You can call in now. I'm going to answer you guys' phone calls early. And I'm going to bring in Patrice Holland pretty quick here uh, so we can get her thoughts on it. For the people who don't know who Patrice Hollins is, go Google her. I've been looking at this woman for a minute. The, the woman is, is just uh, is a fine woman because well, y'all ought to know how I like my women's shape. I like my women's shape like the letter P. So Patrice Hollis, that's H-O-L-L-I-S. Like I said, I like my women's shape like the letter P. And she shaped like the letter P. A whole lot of chess. She got a bit of ass. She just doesn't. She's got a bunch of titties. She shaped like this. And flat in the back. Now, I don't, I, I'm not really keen to that. I used to date a chick that was shaped like that. Brown skin chick. These huge breasts. Them some bitches was heavy. But she didn't have no ass. But she looked really nice. Like I used to hold them. I don't know who ever had sex with a big breast woman. But if you're on top of them and you hold them. The breasts squeeze together like this, and they like bow. It, it's just anyway. Like, why am I talking about this? But it's when they get up and walk in the bathroom with no clothes on is when you realize it's a bad deal. How many of you have ever serious business? How many of you have ever sat there and had a really good time with a woman? And then see her for naked for the first time and just be turned off. Or oh, man. Have any of you ever just 
seen the person get out of bed and walk and be like, I really like them. They got a really pretty face. They got a shitty shape. Like, I'm sure Cedric the Entertainer is not sexy when he go to the bathroom. Think about it, ladies. You could really like Cedric's uh, personality. You could really like Cedric, um, his face. But he get out of the bed and he walk and you say, oh, my God, this nigga shaped like a weeble wobble. He might stumble, but he won't fall down. I, my ex, I was like, God, I love the way she shaped. I used to love her titties. I'm telling you, I could have an orgasm just holding them. I used to play with them all day, and they was just big, like motherfucking Hulk smash titties. Them things was just out of line. But damn it, and I, I felt bad. I didn't want to tell her just, God, you got a fucked up bottom half. You got a shitty bottom half. Ass just looked like. Somebody took that wall and drew a line. There's your ass. Now go on. I said, oh, my God. And she probably listening. I'm sorry. You know you got a flat ass, though. You know that thing horrible. Then it had that little booty meat at the bottom. So it was flat, but had booty meat that was flapping around. Looking like SpongeBob ass. Did you ever see SpongeBob when they show him with his ass? I said, God, I just, I really hate to see you walk away. I'm not leaving you. No, I hate to see you walk away. I want to see you walk towards me. Well, that's the type of shape Patrice got. <laughs> I seen the pictures. I like, wow, she got a real. I see why she made it into the in the Playboy, though, because she has a white girl shape. She got the hips is way up here. You know how white girls put their bikini on and then their hips just pop out the fucking bikini just way up here. It look like if they move to the side, they damn ribs and hips going to hit each other like it hurt. Ow, 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 ow. It is a, you ever see the way white girls are built? They built weird. That they, they, they built weird. So you, you watch them, and it's just a bad look. And the Google Plus Hangout is just go to, YW, go to YouTube at, uh, go to YouTube forward slash YWMV the show three. I think I might, I could be wrong. All of them are supposed to go there. But I, I watched the, sh the, 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 the chick shape and I was like, that's just pretty fucking ugly. It really is just, but I really love her. So I tried to keep the relationship together. I tried to do like key sweat, make it last, but. That is not the wrong link. I just clicked on it. It worked. You have to when you click on it, you have to click on the thing on you got to scroll down and it says um when it when you scroll down it'll say um what will it say? It'll say something. I tell you who I really like, Selena. Selena's my girl. Let's go ahead and get into the is it just me? I'm ready to do that so I can get into the show. So I can be these dumb asses. Selena, look out for me. And and, and uh for all the people who don't know, Selena's not black. Selena doesn't get paid one dime. Selena will send me stuff, send me articles. Selena will tell me who's doing what, on what page, where at. I've never met Selena. I could walk up in the grocery store right now and see Selena and get stabbed and would not know who's stabbing me. Why are you stabbing me, bitch? Ah! <laughs> Who is this bitch? Damn it, man. Nigga getting straight up killed up in this motherfucker. 
looking like that white boy that got stabbed by Jody Arias. Damn it, man. White chicks are sneaky. They give you some pussy and stab you in the shower and shoot you in the face. Bam. Oh, no. Why did you do this? You just sucked my dick. I don't understand. <laughs> That's what a white boy do. White boy just got shot and still questioning what just happened. Are you really trying to are you trying to negotiate with the murderer? Why are you stabbing me in my solar flexes? Why? Nigga, if you don't shut the fuck up. Jeez. Questioning everything that happened. Stop asking why, nigga. Try blood dry. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into this. That's for all you old school people who remember that commercial. Why ask why? Try bud dry. When you have to explain a joke, it ain't funny. Just go, I just want to throw you out, throw that out there to y'all. When you have to explain a joke, it isn't funny. But I don't. What's the one thing I don't have to explain? I don't have to explain my love for Coke Zero, and I also don't have to explain. I don't have to explain the is it just me? So let's get into that bitch. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Is It Just Me. Now, if you have not went out and got you no damn Coke Zero, you need to go do it. Go to CokeZero.com or go to SodomayorTV.com and click on the Coke Zero link. Get you some Coke Zero, man. It tastes just like Coke, but it has zero count them. Zero calories. Are y'all ready to get into this thing? I am. You ready? Let's go. Is it just me? Or does it seem like people do not want to prove you wrong by doing the opposite of what you said they would do? The majority of people nowadays will do exactly what you said they would damn do. Now, the day I had to look on my deck gum Twitter, and my Facebook and everywhere and I'm watching a bunch of dark skinned chicks tell me that I should not generalize dark skinned women and right after that line they start calling me a faggot punk every name you can think of and in the process of doing this they make sure that they say I'm black as hell now, I'm really confused about that. And you also see people like another woman online who says she was an Indian. Her name says Indian something. Yet, she says she taken up for black women and she said she's a light-skinned chick with a big hair hat on. And she said, how dare you talk about black women like that? And I thought to myself, but you're not black. Your Twitter handle says Indian chick. How do you have a stake in the game? You're an Indian. You should only get mad if I go, I don't say that. Or if I say, bang, dang, 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 dang. Now, if I say that, get mad. Other than that, shut the fuck up. But don't it seem like people who wants you to think good about them, don't do something good, they do something bad. You know, like Hitler. Hitler wanted you to believe something, so he felt, I'll beat your ass till you do. You should believe I'm merciful. And how do you believe it? By me kicking your ass until you beg for mercy. I don't know where the logic train went, but I was standing at the motherfucking terminal with my bags and it just went past. <sighs> that damn logic train don't never stop. <laughs> oh, shit. But if y'all look at it, think about it. We do the most illogical thing to try to get people to think what we want them to think. You Indians need to worry about Indians. You Euro blacks need to worry about Euro blacks. Leave the Negroes alone. Leave us to be. This one black dude was trying to prove to the world how much he loved black women named John.
Sean some dumbass shit. I think that's actually his real name, last name, some dumbass shit. Anyway, John was talking about how black women is good and gay men are good. And I kept thinking, surely he's a gay man or with a black woman. But no. Went to that man's Facebook page and he had that cheesing with a white woman. I scratched my head. What am I missing? Am I the only one that say this crap? Does anybody else see the hypocrisy in most, if not all, what these idiots are saying? You know what? Maybe it's just me. Whew. This isn't just me. As always, one of Coke Zero's finest. Guys, go out and get you some Coke Zero. I love Coke Zero. You should love Coke Zero. Go get you some. Go to CokeZero.com. Pick you up some Coke Zero. It's good stuff. That's zero calories. You see what it's doing to me. I'm looking all buff in this red shirt. I look buff. The people saw me up in, in um, Memphis, and they said, man, this Negro's buff. I changed my name to Buffy. The white girl layer. But listen, y'all, seriously. I don't know if y'all saw it. But if you just go to my Twitter timeline, you can go right now. You can do it like Van Halen and go right now. Go for tomorrow. Right now is everything. Right. When you do it right here and now. You could do anything. Give me some hands. Give it some horror. Give it a roo. Where Ray. Hey, right now. Sorry. But um, if you think about it, I just want y'all to pay attention. Just think about it this way. You watch the way these people go on my timeline. It's always the dark skin ones, and the first words out of their mouth is like I won't know them at all. I will have never said anything to them they will have seen a video of mine taking the time out of their day to come to my twitter timeline and call me stupid ugly gay and it's literally someone i've never spoken to someone i don't know at all you're gay you're gay for that what did i say what did i say to you your video and you're gay What? Here's another one by some chick named Voluptuous v, uh, VC watching this video. Pure ignorance. I don't know this chick at all. You know who I do like, though? I like my man's spoken reasons. But he be, he be putting up my stuff. It just came across my Twitter lot timeline now. He done found another one in my video. But this dark skinned chick named Amy Farrah Fowler. Now I want you, I want to I want y'all to pay attention to Amy Farrah Fowler. Amy Farrah Fowler decided to follow me. She said, Don't you think you need to stop talking crap about dark skinned women? I said, You're right. Don't you think you need to stop following me now that you know I talk crap about dark skinned women? That's all I said. Amy Farrah Fowler is a dark-skinned girl with a big-ass weave who took the name of a character from, yes, my favorite show, The Big Bang Theory. Now, Miss Dark Skin loves being dark-skinned so much that she took the character name of a nerdy white chick who has an overdeveloped libido but never taps into it. If you watch the Big Bang Theory, you know it's funny because she's always talking sexually, but she's a nerd and never does sex. But she's intrigued by sex. So she's like a horny nerd that never does anything. But after just simply asking the woman, very nice, it didn't cuss or nothing, I said, now that you see how I speak, surely you're going to stop following me. If you go and look, Surely she has not stopped following me. She's continuing to follow me.
I'm going to retweet what Spoken Reasons tweeted out my stuff. That's my dude. But again, you watch this woman who I don't know, Miss Voluptuous VC, always a fat bitch calling herself voluptuous. You fat bitches need to not be allowed to call yourself voluptuous. Your fat ass need to get called fat. And keep your fat ass out of the motherfucking bathroom taking fat ass pictures with fat ass weave and your fat ass hair, you fat ass bitch. I'm sick of fat bitches with damn beautiful weaves on and big ass clothes and taking pictures of, of their fucking face and shit. Like they the motherfucking most beautiful girl in the world. With your fat ass, you eat everything on the plate. Uh, ooh, eat it, fat bitch, could you eat almost everything in the world? Ooh, you can eat it, fat bitch. Fat whores. Now, fat women that like me and like my show, I don't have a problem with you, but I'm telling you this. If I can pick on a nigga that's broke, I can pick on a bitch that's fat because both y'all can do something about that shit. Don't give me this motherfucking crap that you fat, but you didn't know how you got fat. Your motherfucking ass at 12 years old did not weigh 300 pounds. There was a time when you realized this shit was going too far when you was in the fifth grade and they been, you've been hearing fat ass jokes for five years. You've been hearing them fat jokes for five years, you fat bitch. So don't turn around. I had a fat bitch tell me I've been big boned in all my life. I, I've never met a paleontologist and that motherfucker dug up a fat ass, a big bone motherfucking Cro-Magnon man. That is some big ass bones on that Cro-Magnon man. Let's put him in a museum. These are the big bonitus. Big bonitus rexus. What? Galactus. <laughs> you, this has never happened. So shut the fuck up. And, and fat people, this shit was gradual. Let me say it again. Fat people, you getting fat was gradual. It was gradual. You went from... Foot big, belly big, everything big. Neck big, lips big, everything big. It, it was gradual. You gradually got that damn fat. That fat bitch that doing that twerking bitch, that's why I can't stand. Do y'all know I went and saw the fat bitch do a porn video, that one with the eight foot around hips? She was doing porn. 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 Born to do some porn. There I was burning my eyes. I had to grab my remote and start to click, click, click. Mm -mm. Up on the video stream looking for some porn. And then I seen that shit. She was doing porn. Porn, porn, it burned my eyes. That porn burned my eyes. She was doing that porn, porn, porn. <laughs> That's going to be my new shit, porn. Daddy, what you watching? Porn, porn. <laughs> I'm watching that porn, porn, porn. And eating popcorn. Now, and for those of you who don't get that joke, Google some of what I'm singing. It, you'll laugh. If you knew the original song, you probably will never sing the original song. This is the way it's sung ever again. You will hear it and you'll say, porn. <laughs> porn. Porn. <laughs> and you got to say it hard, too. You can't say it soft. You got to say it hard. Porn. 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 
The original song is called Born to Be Alive. Just go Google or YouTube Born to Be Alive. He's saying the exact thing I'm saying, except he's saying born. And I'm saying poor. <laughs> this is going to stink in the morning. Poor. Oh, my oh, damn. Woo! But anybody talk on the mic behind me? Or can I use this mic? Boy, I bet you I tell you who will be mad. The motherfucking. The senator, Senator Palpatine, he'll come over here and talk. Is it my turn to talk? What happened to this mic? It will never be allowed on the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you guys for joining the show tonight. We are going to bring in uh, fairly early. To... Not that! We're going to... <laughs> He in fairly early. I want to talk about um, I want to talk about what happened in Memphis. I want to talk about um, I'm not gonna talk about Derek Holes. Derek Holes is watching the show. Derek Holes, how you doing? Pow, 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 pow. Derek Holes is enjoying the show. Everybody, give a big round of applause for Derek Holes. <laughs> The whitest man ever who invented break dancing. Let's dance. At that at dance. That's him. Derrick Hose. There he is. Ain't no hoes like Derrick Hose. Say do da do da. Ain't no hoes like Derrick Hose. Oh, do da day. Say it ho. Ain't no hoes like Derrick Hose. Ain't no hoes like Derrick Hose. Oh, do da day. So he's enjoying himself. He's watching the show like he does. Derrick Hose. Somebody throw him a couple of dollars, bands to make this whole dance. This motherfucker been on a tweeting streak. Who's been in the who's been in his Twitter his his Twitter range? This motherfucker been in a tweeting streak. He done made a page. Nigga done sat there and put my grandmother's address on the damn page. And he think that that shit ain't gonna come back to him. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Derek Holes, Holes, Derek Holes in this house, Derek Holes in this house, Derek Holes in this house, Derek Holes in this house. You think he gonna shut me up? Y'all need to cut that shit out. And let me tell you what made it worse. Black women actually thought this motherfucker, this is the second time black women done backed a white man. This is the second time black women have sat up there and said, yeah, he won't say nothing to that white man. Do you understand? I'm telling, let me ask y'all something. Do y'all not understand the depravity of black women? This is the second time. The first time they followed behind this motherfucking man looked like he just jumped out of a cab and snatched three underage kids. You got to ask yourself. Think about it. Black women jump behind that dude. And that mealy mouth motherfucker with the domino mouth bitch. I remember what she said. Tommy, you got a white, a white YouTube superstar. I bet he won't go after him like he goes after everyone else. You know, happy cabbie. I bet he won't go after him like he, like he went after everyone else. And I fell for it like a banana in a motherfucking tailpipe. I said, well, I'll show them. Went after that white boy, and that white boy had all kind of other, other motherfuckers. But even the white boy gave up after a while when his own fans said, you look like a racist. His own fans. And he said, hey, you're right. I better stop. He went on about his business. But she called him. Listen, she called him. A YouTube celebrity. He's been on YouTube since 2006. He has 12 million views. She called him a YouTube celebrity. I have right now 10 million views on the channels I have, and those 10 million views came within six months. 10 million views in six months. 
he had 12 million views over six years. So here's the question, people. If she was so quick to refer to this white man as a YouTube celebrity, why does she still refer to me as just a period eating, woman beating, um, what else does she say? Pedophile, gay, muscle man loving, deadbeat dad. Why does she refer to him as a YouTube celebrity, but refers to me as a fraud? Because that's what black women do. See, if a white dude does what a black dude is doing, he gets more credit for it, i.e. Vanilla Ice, i.e. Eminem, i.e. Jason Williams. White dude does it, black women think it's great. Y'all don't believe me? Watch how black women respond around white men. If a white man tells a black woman right now, give me $100, I'll bring you back $1,000, she will believe it immediately. You don't believe me? If you are my age or older, you all remember your grandmother giving that white insurance man who used to drive up in an all-black neighborhood, she would give that white insurance man straight cash, homie, for insurance that she did not even know if it was real. Who remembers those days when the white insurance man used to come to the neighborhood and take money from grandma? Who remembers that? I remember seeing the white man and then grandma would cook for this white man would go in there in the kitchen and make a sandwich for a man that's providing a service for you that you don't even know if he actually provides the service. I remember my grandmother cooking for this white man. The white man would come in. Uh, 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 excuse me. Do you have a, uh, what is that you're in there making? It smells so good. She'd make this white man a fucking plate. Your black ass come in there and draw to get some of and get the shit slapped out you. Y'all take your black ass back outside and play, motherfucker. Come up in here before the sun go down. You remember what George Michael said? You remember what Elton John said? Don't let the sun go down on me. Or oh, was it don't let your son go down on me? Because if George Michael and Elton John was singing it, it was probably, don't let your son go down on me. Because <laughs> if he do it, dog, I'm going to let it be. Because when you with me, like letting your son going down on me. I'm sorry, y'all. Try to keep a straight face on that one, but I'm about to write that shit down. Don't let your son go down on me. <laughs> your son go down on me <laughs> and it just fits them two singing that song man i couldn't have scripted that better man i need to have a I, somebody somebody need to write this shit down so i can reproduce it and then do it as a skit don't let your son go down on me <laughs> But seriously, I'm going to get back to the serious topic before I get into this phone call. Black people have been willing, especially black women, they give a white man passes for shit that they won't give a black, a black man pass for. A white man without a job is still an investment for black women. Oh, well, he can get a job. He's white. That's why I came up with this saying, a waste of white. I used to say it when I was in high school, white people get mad. I would tell them, you are a waste of white. What do you mean? Well, you got a built-in advantage and your ass is still broke. You are a waste of white. That's like a seven-foot person that don't play basketball. You are a waste of height. How are you that tall? You don't play no ball. That's a waste. You have a built-in advantage. White people don't want to hear it, but you needed to call them on it. How you going to be white and live in a neighborhood with me? You are a waste of white. You got all that built-in advantage and your motherfucking ass is driving the same car as me. Waste of white. Just wasted that white. 
You just pour it out. Pour out a little white. This goes out to all my white folks out there. For my, my white boy Brad. Motherfucking Mike. Is you with me? Pour out a little crackle. <laughs> Pour out a little cracker. You don't wasted it. You don't pour it out a little cracker. You don't pour it out a little bit. Of, you got half a cracker left in your bottle. Look how much cracker you got left, Derek. Derek, look how much cracker you got left. This is how much you got left. When you trolling me and you got to do most of the trolling yourself, when you got to make shit up yourself, where the white people done backed away from you? This nigga went from 112 followers talking about my followers is fake. His went down to like 103. How you lose? Uh, you got 100 followers. How you lose from them? And fucked around, pulled out a little cracker. That's why he done went crazy. Pour out a little cracker. Because he died last year and I still won't let go. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come back from the break. I'm going to talk about the Memphis trip. We're going to talk about me getting jocked and whatever from about this fool. We're going to talk about these other fools that's trailing me. We're also going to talk about the topic, which is, should we actually be discussing this? I want to get your opinion. Should we actually be discussing this stuff in front of other people? And I also want to hear if that punk calls in, he can call in, he can get in, he can get on. If that punk call in, let him on. If any of them punks that got something to say to me, let them on first. But let me tell you what ain't going to happen. They're not going to call. That's what's sad. These niggas got a lot of shit to say. They won't call. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. You making motherfucking videos. You just want to be a video hoe. I thought the black women were video hoes. It's these niggas is video hoes. Y'all might as well start twerking. Tommy. Tommy. I am Tommy. Just put me in shit. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all might as well just start twerking. I like the way you twerk, bitch. You about to back it up. Nigga just begging for me. Bitches is putting my name in their videos. Say my name, say my name. D damn. The video ain't got shit to do about me. You don't put my name in the video. This is a video about cars, but you said you hate Tommy Sotomayor. I did. Now let's want to talk about cars. They let you get away with that shit? Why are they not flagging them? They need to be flagged for that. How am I the biggest name in YouTube? But I'm a nobody. But I live in my mama basement. But I'm a squatter. But I'm gay. But I don't pay child support. One girl wrote on a video. It was hilarious. I watched it. She said, Tommy has been charged with beating two women. With brutally beating two women. So surely you guys are stupid for watching his videos. I said, Brutally beating two women. Surely the two women I brutally beat would be coming out talking about it. Well, no, no, no. Let's just make it easy for everyone. Surely you'd be able to see somewhere where he's been convicted of beating anyone. It's easy to find, isn't it? This dude was convicted for this. That's how it works. It's easy. You go, he was convicted for this. But they don't, they don't ever say, and for two years, they've been saying the same crap. Everybody's going to sue me. Nothing ever happens. Dude claims I'm threatening him, but what happens? He keeps fucking with me. He won't leave me alone. I feel like Michael Jackson. The more I kept begging the nigga, stop texting me. Stop inboxing me. He didn't stop. Just leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Stop it. Just stop fucking with me, dog. But he wouldn't. Up until yesterday, when I finally had to just block the nigga. Still tweeting me. Tweeting, uh, texting me. My motherfucking home phone. Fucking with my home phone. Who does that? You claimed I threatened you. Why would you keep fucking with me? 
Why would you keep bothering me? But he kept on every night. I'm putting this up. I'm sending this. You better back down. You better watch out. I thought this nigga was singing the motherfucking Santa Claus song. You better watch out. You better not cry. What? Santa Claus is coming to sound. Nigga, do what you gonna do. Don't be telling me step by step like you motherfucking Bobby Brown. Every little step I take, this nigga be tweeting every little step he make. Shut the fuck up and do it, nigga. You know you ain't got no damn case. Shut the fuck up. Do what you're going to do, nigga. Now, talking about some, t and then want to tweet himself, talking about some, Tommy's afraid of the white man. Nigga, I had a weekend with my family. You should have had one with yours, motherfucker. How you going to be a millionaire fucking with a nigga that's broke? Like you said, I'm broke and got fake ass Twitter followers. Remember, my show is a spam show. Remember? So if all of this is true, motherfucker, for you to be a rich man and me to be a poor man, let me say this. To be a rich man like you, sir, you making poor ass decisions. I think that's going to be my next T-shirt. For such a rich man, you make very poor decisions. If I'm not the word Smith, I don't know who the fuck is. Bam. Just like that. We're going to go to a break and we're going to come right back with a beautiful sister from Playboy, and we're going to ask her some questions about what it was that I've been talking about, which is a bunch of nonsense. But we got to talk to her when we come back. If you don't know who she is, fellas, go look her up. And ladies, too, her name is Patrice Hollis. That's P-A-T-R-I-C-E-H-O-L-L-I-S. Beautiful woman. Shaped like the letter P. Pop, 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 pop. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know who I am. Y'all know what this is. Come on now. Act like you don't. Are they still acting like they don't? Yeah, they doing it, but we got to shut them up. This is your world. Stay tuned for more Your World, My Views, the realest show on internet radio with your host, Tommy Sotomayor. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Tommy Sotomayor. This is a message to the loyal following out there. You know and I know there's nothing better than a nice, well-dressed man in a suit. Now, with the budgets being as tight as they are, a lot of people cannot afford a nice suit. Well, that's untrue because my friends at CustomSuitShop.com have made the custom suit available and affordable for all price ranges and all budgets that's right go to customsuitshop.com they believe that they're witnessing the return of the elegant gentleman and they are dressing up again and they want clothing that fits right and is comfortable and looks great and makes a value statement that's what my man louis morgan of customsuitshop.com wants everyone to know see what they can do is they can come to your home perform 20 key measurements and then hook you up with a custom suit. You know people getting tired of wearing suits off the rack. Not saying there's nothing wrong with suits off the rack. But how would you like to have a custom suit made to fit you? The way your body contours. The way you move. That's what you can get at the custom suit shop. Go to customsuitshop.com. There are three locations. They have one in Marietta at 1395 South Marietta Parkway, Building 100. One in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, South Towers. Then they have another one in Birmingham, Alabama. That's right. Three locations where you can get your custom suit made. So go to customsuitshop.com and make sure that you mention Tommy Sotomayor sent you. Customsuitshop.com. Well, with prices like these, you can't afford not to look good. Just log on at customsuitshop.com. That's C-U-S-T-O-M-S-U-I-T-S-H-O-P. Dot com and call at 404-869-3113 if you're in the Atlanta area. If you're in the Birmingham area, call at 205-541-9469. And if you're in the Charlotte area, call 704-552-3690. And tell them your world my views sent you. Oh, 
commercial for Westwood College and decided to give him a call. At Westwood, I got my bachelor's degree in just three years. I got career training in the classroom and they helped me build my resume. So when I graduated, I had everything I needed to finally start my career. Start your career with a bachelor's degree from Westwood College. Graduate in just three years with the tools you'll need to start a career in design, justice, technology, health care, or business, including construction management. Call now for your free career success kit and learn about the careers and salaries that could be yours with a Westwood College degree. Online classes are available. And now, and now back to the show where truth is king, king and logic reigns supreme. Your world, my view. Your hope. Your hope. Mr. Mr. Tommy. Sotomayor. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mr. Tommy Sotomayor. And this is Your World. Now, I went to the break being silly and acting funny, and people were sending. First off, I want to thank everybody that um, took time out to make mention of something that I keep forgetting to make mention of, and that is... Go to uh, SotomayorTV.com. Y'all can always click on that donate button. I've, been, I've spent four years, about five years, not talking about that son of a bitch. I'm talking about it now. Go there. The show was supposed to cost, but it doesn't. So since it don't cost, go check it out. Go hit it. Just look at it. It's a nice button. It really is a nice button. You look at it and you think, wow, that's a, that's a sexy button. Like, I've thought about that button, and I was like, this is a very nice button. This thing is in my face. I don't know what that is. Why is it like that? It's supposed to be over there. There it is. Hello, dear. Well, thank you. Look at your big old head. Let me see your big head. Look at that hair. Look at that hair on that big head, girl. You like your hair like that? You want me to fix it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do to it? Take it out so it can be puffy. All right, we're going to make it puffy. All right, well, thank you, dear. Bye bye. All right, that's my big head child brought me a refreshment. Now, we're about to get into an interview with someone who I found on Twitter. And um, this is one of the most, I would say, one of the most beautiful women I've seen. Now, I know what you're thinking. This nigga says that every time a guest comes on. (laughs) That is not true. That is not true. I say it every other time a guest comes on. Get it right. Don't get it right. But no, she is um, one of the Playboy Playmates, and you guys know that we feature the Playboy Playmates here at Your World, My Views. And this is one I didn't get a chance to feature, and I wanted to make the rounds and come back and bring her on. So we're going to let her not only tell you about her, her time in Playboy, But we're going to let her tell you a little bit about some of the current events and talk to us about her thoughts on all of these topics and more. So without further ado, I would like to to bring in the beautiful, the sexy, my letter P. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Miss Patrice Hollis. Patrice, what's going on? Hey, what's up? Not much, dear. How has the world been treating you? Well, you know, it uh, it goes both ways. It can either treat me good or it can be a real nasty place. Depends on where you're at and who you're talking to. I feel you, but sometimes there's a lot of things that's good that go both ways. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But uh, <laughs> now, I, I, Tom, I was talking about you before, and I was talking about um, I've I've had a few of well, not a few. Uh, last year, the um, I can't remember her name, but she was. They made her the um, the uh, playmate for. Black History Month, basically, and she was on the show. God, why can't I remember her name? I can't recall her name, but she was on here. And Honestly, she, huh? I probably don't know her name either. Isn't it, isn't <laughs> it sad? Because she was talking about that she was only one of 25 black women to ever be featured in Playboy. And she's black? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like, I honestly, I, I kind of... I step in, we have, you know, bookings and work, and I step out and live a more normal life. I, I can't do all that Hollywood stuff. So um, there's a few playmates that I'm, like, you know, real tight with, but I've known them since I became a playmate back in 07. So, you know, we built that relationship. But other than that, like, I, I work with them and some of them, and then I go home. I don't, uh -oh, <laughs> I don't uh -oh. mix and mingle. It's work, you know? And just girls and drama, I'm not. I'm not with all that drama and, you know, women are women and stuff like that. So I, you know, I, I don't pay attention really. <laughs> so women are hard to deal with is what you're saying. That's what you're telling me. And, you know, people in general are hard to deal with, you know, but, um, I'm just the type of person, like my friends I've had for 15, 18, 10 years, you know, that type, like I, I keep my circle small. So. I'm with you on that one. That I tell people that all the time. It's, it's like, why would, why would you just make friends? And, and people look at me crazy when I say this. I said, I'm 37 years old. Why would I just make new friends at 37? I should right. have already I mean, had I my think, friends. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think there's sometimes that somebody comes along and you guys just click and there are good people in the world. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to leave, you know, the people that have been loyal to me that, you know, I know I could trust the people that have had my back through all these years, through everything I've been through for, you know, a new person. And I'm, I'm very weary. Like, I, if I don't know you, you're not coming to my house. I don't care if the person you come with, I know. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't trust a lot of people like that. Like, my circle is my circle. And, you know, there's a couple of people that might be a step or two outside, but, you know, even them, I've known them for a good three, four years or something like that. Like, I just don't, I'm not one of them females that's like, oh, she's my best friend, like, because we have fun Thank at the you. club. No, that's not happening. Thank you. I'm the same way. <laughs> and the same bitch that'll go and fuck your man and you know, <laughs> get the money out the house and, you know, or, ooh, let's go here because so-and-so hosts him. Bitch, I don't care if I'm not getting a check, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm I'm the same so. way. I, and and my, producer, <laughs> my producer just told me her name was Leola, Leola Bell. Oh, I know her. Yeah, she. Yeah, I do. I work. I've worked with her a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And when she was on, she was talking about how it was a a pleasure to be Miss February in 2012, but it being, it being Black History Month. But she said, you know, it was kind of uh -huh. saddening that it was so few African American sisters in there. And then I even brought up the fact that there's like no dark skin ones. Let me ask you about being a black. First off, were you like one of the playmates, or were you a cover girl? What was your story? No, I'm a playmate. Um, playmate. A lot of people confuse it, um, but a playmate is the actual centerfold of the magazine for that month. Mm -hmm. She has the title and month of that whatever year. So, like, I'm in September 2007. Like, I have the centerfold spread of that month. Um, and so there's one, you know, every month, whatever, 12 mm -hmm. months a year. That's so simple. But um, so that's a playmate. Now, there's girls who do, like, the Playboy Live and, you know, the webcam girls and then – Playboy Social and stuff like that, and, you know, that's cool, too, but there, there's a difference between, you know, the different titles. Yes. And um, so that's what it is, but Playmate still is a magazine. Exactly, exactly. Now, your time as a Playmate, how did, you, how did you enjoy it? How did it come about? How did you even get to be one of the people that they were selected. A lot of, uh, there were a few people who said that, or well, there was one that was shocking. They said their brother sent the pictures in. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I fell into it honestly. Like, like sounds like my last people, girlfriend. <laughs> most people know I never looked at Playboy. I didn't pay attention to. It. I thought it, honestly they only took blonde girls. That was the stereotype that was, you know, in my eyes. So I you know, I didn't pay attention to it, and I'd never shot nude 
before Playboy. I'd done some modeling, some videos, and, you know, just to build up my resume. But I didn't, I don't like to get caught up in, in stuff and get labeled as, you know, things. So I do some things, add to the resume, and move on. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually was shooting with a new photographer, um, and he asked, and just normal modeling pictures, nothing nude or too sexy or anything like that. And he asked, he was like, you mind if I submit you to Playboy? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And, you know, I was not thinking that they'd actually, got, I got a call back. They they asked me to test with him nude, and um, I'm still really good friends with him. He's a really good guy. And we were both nervous because I, like I said, I've never shot nude before. And, um, and it's, it's like no touch-ups, no nothing. Like, this is you. So um, did that, did it back, and I got the call, went did my test shoot with them, and, you know, a month later I was out two weeks at the mansion shooting all my stuff, my video and centerfold and everything. Now, what do you think about my man Hugh how, when you met him? What, what, what were your thoughts? Did you know about him going into it? Did you know about his, his aura and all that stuff, and how did you think about him when you first met him? No, I was, I mean, I was kind of nervous, and it took a lot for me to decide to do it. I had, you know, I didn't have, like, the best upbringing and things of that nature, so I had two little sisters. So it was a conflict within myself of, do I really want to do this? And, you know, I was kind of, I was helping take care of them and raise them, and I wasn't wow. in a good place, you know, financially and stuff, so I kind of did it for everybody, but at the same time, I still have my reservations a little bit, you know, when people boo you and your pictures go everywhere, but I didn't know half. I didn't know anything about half. I didn't know anything about Playboy. So when I basically just threw myself into something so we could all have a better life, not that, you know, it, it is what it is. But um, when I met him, he was very nice. I was on a few episodes of The Girl Next Door, and one of them, um, they actually featured me of my whole shoe. It's him, it's him and Holly, like, looking at, my pictures on the computer and all that stuff. So he was really nice. Um, he doesn't, it's, I hate when people are like, oh, did you sleep with her? I'm sorry. There's no way in hell. No disrespect, <laughs> but. <laughs> it seemed like it'd be an I easy, got, wait got. a minute though. Let me say this though. Sleeping with Hef <laughs> seemed like it'd be an easy thing to do. I sleep with Hef. Let me tell you why. Cause all you gotta do is rub his head and go to sleep. But I bet, you know what? <laughs> I'm the type of person like, if I am not attracted to you, if I don't feel that chemistry, I don't care. What you do, how much money you have, how good you look, what your body looks like. If I don't have that in me, I don't touch me. I'm glad <laughs> you say me. that because that's how sex should be. You should. I, I tell women all the time, you have sex because you're horny. You don't have it for any other reason. <laughs> you don't have it because he's yeah, rich. You don't have it because he convinced you. You don't. No, you have it because that's who you want to have sex with. Therefore, you'll have less right. regrets when you're done. It's always, it's better. It, it's not, to me, if it ain't, if you don't have all that, it's not good sex. It's just some shit you're doing just to be doing it. Amen. Then, you know, for whatever your reasons are. But it's not, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not free like that. I don't like to just have sex with anybody. I could, you know, I have yes, options, could. but that's not how I am. So I need, no, I need that chemistry and all that extra stuff. So. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here with uh, Playboy's Miss Miss uh, September 2007 and uh, Patrice Hollis. Go check her out if you don't know. Now, Patrice, you talked about your time uh, being play, a playmate and you talked about your upbringing. Uh, I don't know if you mind me getting into that, but I want to ask you a little bit about that. You said you were taking care of your two sisters. Right. I mean, it's, people around me know it's no secret. I have two sisters that um, actually, I'm, I'll be 32 this year, so I'm 18 and 19 years older than them. And, you know, not the best father. My mom did the best she could and, you know, and brought me up to have my own and rely on myself and, you know, whatnot. But mainly it was the, the father aspect, a lot of drama, and, and he had kids after me and whatnot and whatnot and wasn't taking care of them and just caused a lot of drama and BS. So I stepped in as that father, you know, as that older sister. So I was kind of like mama, daddy everybody and making sure that they're good like those are like my little girls so you know they're with their mom now but they we're in close contact and i make sure that they're good okay so there was a time in which you had you had custody of them no not custody but yeah live with me and stuff like that so okay well that that is very very uh, admirable of you to be able to, to do that how did that make you feel how did that shape you having to be a, um, a mother figure at a young age. Well, see, I, 
I've always, like, been into kids and things of that nature. Actually, the first kid I ever babysat was with Kalisa. <laughs> Funny story, right? Right. Um, and so I've always done that. I worked at a place out in Vegas where they have, like, abused and neglected children, and I just, I've always been a caretaker. So that part of it was easy, just having that responsibility at such a young age. I, I grew up already faster than normal because of my father. So, you know, I was more mature. I have a brother four years older than me. So my mom, like, I was always more mature than him because I just caught on real fast and smart. So um, it wasn't as much as, like, you know, it was more more just the responsibility of, like, okay, I got to work. I got to find money. I got to, you know, make sure that they eat and they got clothes on their back. They're going to school. They're, you know, and then still dealing with the stress of his drama. That's just, you know, that's just what it was. But I'm at a better place, you know, um, good right now. They're good. And, you know, I had to learn to forgive him for all the bullshit he put me through so that they could still at least have that relationship. Like He fucked up our relationship, basically. Being mm-hmm. personal, right? And um, but um, I learned this. I had to forgive him. That way, him and I could at least just communicate, so that they could still have a chance to have a relationship with their father. I didn't want to be in the way of that. Let me get in your business. You know, what, me, I, I got to get in your business. What made your con- your relationship with your father so contentious? Because if you don't know, we talk a lot about the dynamic between mothers, daughters, sons, and 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 and. And, and, and all that stuff in the black community. So maybe you can help us out or relate to a lot of, a, a lot of other people might be able to relate to what you were going through. What made your difficult with your father so difficult? Well, I mean, he, you know, he was a cheater and all that stuff he did out with my mom. And, and I seen it at a young age and me being just how I am. I have like an old soul as my mom said. So mm-hmm. I was trying to, take care of her, take care of my, I always tried to take care of everybody, even at a young age, like, and, you know, he cheating, running around town, you know, this, all that normal stuff, but as I got older, and, you know, he remarried, and I told her, like, don't marry him, but, you know, people don't, I, to, to me, like, if I come across a man and his kids are telling me, like, don't fuck with him, then you need to take heed to that and run, bitch. Like, right, <laughs> right. But, um, you know, but you know, just so cheating was his just, cheating was his so, cheating was basically his downfall. Well, that that and then just the mental abuse, the you know, he never abused me physically. Like, it's a couple times when I got older where he tested me, but he found out that I'm not gonna just roll up for him. So, um, it, it's a lot. It, it's you know, mentally, the the ver- he went to prison for a year for stalking, like, it for stalking me and his. His, my little sister's mom, like, it's, it's deep. Oh, wow. wow. I got treated more like a girlfriend or his, you know, wife or, you know, like that kind of aggression towards me because I'm helping take care of his kids and he couldn't do all the bullshit that he wanted to do. He just not right. So now we cool. We're cool now, like, to the point, like, you know, we could talk on the phone every blue moon, hey, how you doing? And, and I just leave it at that. I know I can never trust him and, you know, but I think some people, everybody has a story, you know? Yes. And I think it's about what you do with that story that shapes the person that you become. I could have been like, oh, well, it was me, and, you know, my daddy did this, and, you know, whatever. And But I decided to, you know, take that and made me a stronger person and made me wiser, and I used it in my life for more positive, to guide myself and not follow in my parents' footsteps. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here with uh, Playboy Playmate, Miss Patrice Hollis. And if you are looking at the show right now, you see her over my right shoulder. Uh, Patrice, I want to ask you how, and, and this is something that you can really help a lot of, not only young girls, but just people in general. How do you get past or how do you give that forgiveness? Because it sounds like what happened to you was really hurtful, but you were able to get past it and give your father forgiveness that maybe he didn't deserve. What brought you to that place? I think it's just a realization of claiming yourself for one and, you know, not allowing somebody to have that control over you and, you know, recognizing people for who they really are. 
I know my father. I know what he's about. I, you know, he tells me I just, I know him. So I know what limits and boundaries I can put on our relationship. Unfortunately, that they even have to be there, but it keeps it to where we are kosher and, you know, I can call him on the holidays and, you know, stuff like that. So it's a matter of, you know, a lot of tears came out and, you know, I had to have him admit just so he knows his fault, whether he is sincere or genuine or whatever, but you just, you got to make people kind of like face their, their faults. And then it's like, you know what? So now that you know what I'm saying is true, we both know the truth. We both know the fucked up stuff that's going on and whatnot. Now I can be like, all right, I have peace within myself and I'm taking control of me. You no longer can control my thoughts and my actions because it it, it does. It, it messes up, you know, especially with women and girls growing up, the, you know, relationships with the next man. You look to your father as a role model for what type of man you want to date and things like that. I went to the point where if you had the same name as my daddy or anything like that, I was not dating you. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. (laughs) So it was 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 really bad. Like, what is your relationship (laughs) with your mother then? What is your relationship like with your mom? Because your mom picked the guy, like the other chicks who picked him. What was your relationship with with her? And my parents, they they knew each other as teenagers. You know, so, and my my father comes from an abusive home so it's a I had to break the cycle somebody has to be grown and mature enough to break the cycle and strong enough and it's not easy it doesn't happen overnight but it ha- it can't happen you know but me and my mom we're cool we're real tight um you know it was, it was times where we've had rocks in our relationship because she would kind of you know she loved my dad you know to no end and I was like I can't if you fucking with him like I can't really fuck with you because I can't have that I'm not allowing that in my life, and I'm not allowing you to bring that in my life. What do you think so, bro- kept you know, bringing her back? Because you really need to talk about that. And ladies and gentlemen, we're with Patrice Hollis, and she's talking about her life story. You really need to talk about that as a woman, because I'm sure not only have you seen that in your mother, but you've seen that in a lot of other women to where they're drawn to the wrong guy, and it seems like they can't walk away from him. My mother was like that. How did that make you feel right. watching your mother do something? Because I had to watch my mother fight with her ex-husband, I saw him stalk us like how you were talking and I kept thinking and I was a child yeah. being exposed to this I kept thinking surely you're going to stop doing this and the next week this Negro back in the house you know because women are nurturers we all think we can help and we can fix and we we see potential in men we see what the good in them we see what they can be if they just put their you know if they just tried or, or wanted to change and things like that. so we always think we can help and fix you know, and I think that it's just built in us. That's how we were made because, you know, we, we handle everything. We can juggle kids, jobs, you know, we can do all that in one day. That's just how we were built. And so when you love, women love hard. So it's unconditional. We love men with their faults. And that's, that's you know, that's the issue is that we have to recognize that the, some of those faults are okay. And then some of them we need to walk away from. That I is... had to learn that myself. Uh oh, uh oh. We will. We'll yeah. get to that in a minute. I want to hear it because I was going to ask you <laughs> how does it impact your dating? I guess we can get to it now. We can skip a couple of questions. Miss running my interview for me. That was pretty good segue. How <laughs> how does how has that affected your dating? And if you know, you've seen this because I picked women when I first started. I started picking women like my mom. And it was like, uh, I knew the faults in my mom, and yet I was picking women who had those exact same faults and wondering why it wasn't working. What happened with you? Right. I mean, now I'm I'm single. I've been celibate even for a couple of years now, and, you know, that's just what it is because I went through some, some things. And I think, you know, I, I, I've done the same thing that I just said. I'm guilty. Like I said, I'm guilty of it, too, where I – Dating a guy who, you know, we get along, get along great or whatever the case may be and everything's good and it's just, you, they cheat, they act up and it's like, you, I look at me like, what are you, what are you missing right now? Because, you know, you think like, I'm, I'm this, this, that, and this, another. And as women, it's like, we're like, 
I know some are like, you know, I have a degree, I have a job, I have my own house, my own car. Those are things for yourself. You have to realize what things, what qualities do you have for a man? And it's a whole different, you know, spin on it. I but like that. It just, <laughs> I do because it you're right. Like, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of black women always saying what they bring to the table. It's always something materialistic have you noticed you never hear like even when you talk about black women who get mad that black men date outside their race they'll say well you only dating that woman because she weak she'll push over she do whatever you say but she ain't and then the things that the black woman says she bring are things that no real man would want i don't want a strong woman that's like me dating a man i don't want a woman that will talk crap to me that makes life difficult but for some reason that's sold by black women why is that because I, well, for myself, I'm a, I'm strong, and anybody who knows me is like, oh, I don't, I have low tolerance for dumb shit. Maybe because I, I think, I think more with common sense, and I'm just like, the, you know, the. But what does it mean to be strong? <laughs> Help that, me out. Nobody's ever been able to explain it. I've had everybody on the show. But, I've had the biggest celebrities, and I ask them what is a strong black woman, and they can't explain it. So let me give you a shot at it. What is a strong well, black I woman? Have, I'm not going to say a strong black woman because I'm, I'm not even all black. To be truthful, like, I, I, yeah, I recognize more of the black, like, you know, culture, things of that nature because of the majority of my family and how I was raised, but my grandmother is German. Like, you know, but I, so I recognize that also because I grew up, you know, with her. She's speaking German and eating German food and whatnot. So I always get interviews and they're like, you know, uh, black, and I'm like, well, I am, but at the same time, I recognize this, too, because it's still it's part of me and makes me who I am. So, you know, um, but back to the question, is that a strong per person, and for me, is somebody who just is capable um, mentally, you know, just physically, like emotionally, to deal with just the normal day-to-day -day bullshit that we have to go through and on top of that, everybody else that leans on them, that they're able to hold them up. And on top of that, you know, whatever tragic happens in their life, but they're still able to deal with all of that and still keep their head about them. And then still be able to say, you know what, I can't handle anymore. This is getting too much for me. Like, I need help. Mm-hmm. And see, the thing about, like, the strength thing is, like, it's a weird thing. Like, I, every time I hear a woman, they say, well, you know, they always say, well, you know, you're able to take care of the kids and pay the bills. And I keep thinking, that's not strong. That's you taking care of what you. No, that's normal. Yeah, th thank you. And that's weird. And, I'm, and you know, I'm glad you said something. I spoke to Soledad O'Brien. And I did a video called Mixed People Ain't Black. And she said she agreed with what I was saying. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. You know, I I hear when they say, like, if you have this much black in you, you're supposed to be black. But I feel like why does one dominate the other? Exactly. Regardless of, so, yeah, like I said, you know, I live what you call the stereotypical, like, I like hip-hop or, you know what I'm saying? Like, just to, just to give a stupid example. Like, I live the stereotypical, what you look at me, people think I'm black or whatever you may say, think or whatever. But, like I said, I still relate to, my aunt is, is she's actually mixed, but she looks as white as they come. My grandmother is, she's not even from this country, you know. My grandfather was military, and they, she came over with him. Like, I am not going to just relate to one part of me. I have Chinese in me, but that's something I, you know, I I have no idea about. But I still, like, when people ask me, what do you mix with? I run it down. Because that's what makes me. If I leave out any part, I'm not me as a whole. Well, I tell that's you what, I, I, I like the way you express that. Now, I want to say something. There was something I was saying before you came on air, and you didn't get to hear it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it back to you. I talked about how I grew up around all white people. And the one thing I saw when I looked at your photos, I said, now don't take this the wrong way, uh, but I'm sure you've heard this at one point, And you tell me if I'm lying. I said, she's shaped like a white girl. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah. I hear it all the time. <laughs> I, you know what? It, and I don't mind it. 
You know why? Because I'm able in this industry, I'm able to cross over. Well, that's what I said. I said, that's how you got to be in Playboy. You don't have a bunch of ass. You, you got a bunch of breasts. I said, you shape like the letter P. You got a big pair of breasts and, and white boys like that, right? Yeah. And, and what I'm finding is black boys do too. <laughs> Don't let them fool. Oh, I know. That's why I, every time I tell people I like breasts, they like, oh, man, you got to have some ass. I'm like, dude, what all can you really do with ass? What? I, I don't know what you can do with it. I, I've i been with a girl with a huge ass. She was in King Magazine. I kept thinking I had a big penis until I got behind her. I was like, it's not that big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 I hear it all the time. I, like, I just posted a picture on Instagram a while couple days ago and I was like I didn't get a lot of ass but what I do got I, I love it I'm cool with it so if you don't like it don't worry about it because you're not over here so don't worry about me now how do you feel when you are in that because like when people was like well she's not mixed and I kept saying no I, she, I can tell she's mixed because so before you came on there I said she has high hips uh like like a white the, the way you're built you could tell that you're mixed with something but it's not a bad thing because I love your shape, number one. I'm a breast man, and you just got some breasts to put on loan. You can start a loan shop and lean, loan out breasts and, and still make a kid. And I'm all natural. I just have to put that out there. Cause well, wait, people, wait, wait. That's, that, those are yours? Have, yes, I am all natural. My hair, my everything about me, I have no alterations. Um, no Botox, nothing. I refuse all that. I will age naturally how God made me. And so far, I'm damn happy with it. So... You know, that's what it is. Okay, here's the question. I I don't have the magazine in front of me, and I would have to call Catherine. Let Catherine send them to me. Send me that 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 um that magazine from '07. She's gonna have to send me a, a retro one. How big are they? I'm just I just gotta ask. I'm a 34, like triple double Z. Oh Jesus! You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, Lord, through this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to Miss September 07, Miss Patrice Hollis. We have been having a very deep conversation, not only about being mixed, but about growing up in unstable situations and making the, the stability out of it. I want to ask you this. Do you have any children? No, I'm not married. All right. I'm going to go here with you. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Now, listen, I'm going to go here. <laughs> I want to ask you this. You have about the equal share of black friends and white friends that are females, correct? Yeah. Let me ask you a simple question because I know a lot of models. I know a lot of people in the industry. Have you noticed that it seems like the answer you just gave is acceptable to whites, but to blacks, they always wonder why you're 32 without kids, like there's something wrong with you, like maybe your pussy don't work. Have you ever noticed that? Mm, no, honestly, no, not really because like my friends, they're all, you know, around the same age, and they don't have kids. It, you know, maybe a couple here and there, but, um, and I do, I have a mixture of, of races in my friend pool right here, so mm -hmm. it's, it's everything. The ones and who have kids, what, what, what race are they? One's, like, Cambodian. <laughs> um, another one, she's, like, mixed with, like, um, Korean and black and, now I'm trying to think, like, who all got kids? One of them, she just had a baby. She's black. She um, Any of them married? Yes. Good job. Yes. yes. A lot. Actually, more of my friends are married and, or at least have been together for, you know, umpteen years or whatever that have kids. They, they're, those are the ones that have the kids, mostly. You sound like There's one of those only people. only, like, two. You sound like one of those people that, that believe have. in surrounding yourself with the right people. I try. I learned that. I, I mm -hmm. you know, cause I've had friends that, you know, you just learn. I said, I'm, I'm a people watcher. Yep. And I, I remember what you say. I remember what you told me. I remember all that. So when you come back to me on some other mess, yep. I'll be like, I don't say nothing. I just keep it in my mental. And then I'm, th I'm taking notes. Yep. And then when you come back on some BS, I, you know, I get further and further away. Yep. I'm the same way. I, I try my best not to be surrounded. Like people who ask me, well, you talk so negative about this and you say this and you say that. And will you just hang around the wrong people? I said, actually, I don't. That's why I know so much because I know who not to hang around. The problem is most people who are in bad situations like my mom and your mom, they found themselves in bad situations and refused to get out. All right. And, and, and this yeah, is finally my mom divorced my dad finally. But yeah, it, 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 
it is. It's a it's a cycle, you know, and, and like I said, somebody has to break the cycle. Yes, yes, yes. And and it is a great thing too when it happens. All right, let me ask you, how do you as far as dating, how difficult is dating when you're in a sexualized industry and you know guys are gonna see your photos or whatnot and see your nudes? How do you separate between the guys who would actually really want to talk to you? Because you said you haven't dated in two years and you're or you've been celibate for two years. Was that a part of why you pulled yourself out of the dating pool? That was part of it. Well, no, not really that because, like, most the guys I've dated, like, I've known them for a long time. Like, I'm like that. Like, my friends, <laughs> it's kind of like that with the guys I date. Like, I've known them for a long time from high school, and then, you know, now it's like, hey, what's up, whatever. But even, with, you know, somebody I haven't known, um, there's been a couple in the industry, not a lot. I try to stay away from that. And... Some you just you kind of can tell if you're not all wrapped up in that you can tell who is and and what their reasons and purposes are like you know they're where they're if they want to be at the party because so and so is hosting like uh, yeah all right you go there and you know um catch you later so you, you can kind of see just how people act and what they talk about what's important to them about like and and how they look at you and some people. I don't know I'm a playmate. You know, I'm not no A-list celebrity. You know, it is what it is. So the ones that do are mostly people that I've known for a while. And, you know, that's just what it is. That is such a humble thing you said because I've had some of the playmates, and I don't want to name them, but they've come on here like they just motherfucking solve pie or like they cure cancer. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Like, you'll talk to them, and they'll be talking like it. And I'm like, do you know what it is? It was seriously in the grand scheme of things. Do you understand what it is you do? But they will be talking like they just, like, shit, it's puffy and then them. Yeah. I mean, I am grateful for the opportunity that has saved me of being a planet. I'm, I'm okay with nudity, with beautiful, tasteful, you know, pictures, that's how I look at myself in those pictures, you know. It's my penthouse type stuff, you know. So I'm okay with that. As long, I feel like as long as somebody is comfortable within their own skin, cool. If we could walk out down the street naked, it'd be a great day. But at the same time, yeah, people look at you like, mm, yeah, that's porn and whatever. To me, porn is having sex on film and doing some other, you know, extra stuff. But Nudity has been around for how long? Like, Last I checked, know, nudity has like, been around since birth. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have nude statues in random places across the city. You have signs, billboards with girl, nude girls, and nobody says nothing about that. And then it's like, somebody always has something to say, but I'm like, but then, where did you see it? How did you look at it that you now have something to say? Thank you. You have something to say about something that you're viewing, you're looking at. I'm sure you didn't just look at it once and say, ew, and put it down. Thank you. I, and I, and it's like, it's always those people. I remember when McGreevy was so upset, the, the uh, governor of New York, I mean, Jersey, excuse me, he was so upset with gays and trying to ban gay marriage. What fa what did they, everybody find out? He was gay, had a boyfriend and everything. Right. You know, and it's like, even my little sister, one of them, when she was younger, she seen me on TV, like the girls next door or whatever. We were at like a water park, something simple. And she was just like, I want to be a playmate. Or she wants, she said playboy, because she don't even know. Like, she knows, you know, but she doesn't, she, then she didn't know. Like, mm -hmm. the whole, I, I never let them see my issues. They just, they had my head shot, you know, up on their wall type thing. But they never seen the issue, and, you know, they don't, Computer stuff is blocked and all that extra stuff. So, you know, I told, I was like, no, you, she's smart. And I was like, you know, she likes fashion and her nails and all that stuff. She's, you know, still a little girly girl. And I was like, you focus on that. You like fashion. You like designing. You focus on that. You go to school. You get your degree. And, you know, you, you focus on that first. Cause, and then later on in life when she's, you know, 21, if that's the route that she wants to go, then she's grown enough to make her own decisions. But right now, I don't even want to put it in her head. I want to deter her to another avenue. Like, I'm not ashamed of it at all. But I know some of these girls that would be like, they're like, yeah, I was two years old and I wanted to be a playmate. Like, 
it can it uses <laughs> a stepping stone, not a final destination. All you right, know, ladies, it cannot be a final destination. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Patrice Hollis here, uh, Playboy, September 07. And I want to ask you, you said you talked about it not being a final destination. What did you parlay your being a playmate into? What did you parlay it to? I am the type of person that, like, I like to try different things. I don't, I don't feel like we in life have to be like, I went to school and now I'm just a lawyer. And I'm not knocking anybody or saying anything. I just feel like I don't ever want to just be one thing. I, I'm interested. I'm curious. I want to know. I want to try this, try that. So with that being said, I ended up having, I basically developed and did my, hosted my own radio show on Playboy Radio for a year. Um, and then they weren't paying, so. <laughs> see you're being very honest when most people would just lie and be like you know even though uh, they don't know yeah i mean but like i said i'm all about experiences and what i can take from some they might not have paid but at the same time you know what happened i have that on my resume yes so if i ever want to go do radio I have that experience, and it's talk radio, not, you know, playing music, and, and honestly, I'm not knocking you, but that, to me, that shit was hard, mm -hmm. and sometimes I had to do it by myself, so, you know, but I mean, I met a lot of people, we had, you know, nice celebrity guests, stuff like that, and, and some of the big music industry people and stuff like that, so it was real cool, it was a great experience, and I take that, and I don't look at it negative, neg negative at all, so there's that. And then, you know, I've, I've been in Playboy a couple more times. I've done, I've been as to Estonia. I host, I launched the 25th international edition of Playboy. I'm in their Playboy. I'm in another international. It's like, I've done, you know, all of that. And then on my own, I write. So I've written a poetry book that I'm working on right now. It's um, basically finished. So that's going to be coming out, my website and, um, I actually have an adult toy, but it's like a novelty toy, like funny type of thing. But um, ah, I do like a lot. Like something you might talented. find at Spencer's. I'm sorry, what? Like something you might find at Spencer's? Yeah. It's like, it's a tongue, like with the, you know, like the mouth, the tongue, like a little vibrator can go in the back of it, or you can use a sampler, but you can even put your finger in, just, you know, you can make it a joke or you can use it. So I always you know, wondered, like, I seen one of those mouth things, and I seen a guy using. I was like, that seemed like a, like it was like a power drill. It it seemed like it, like somebody walk in on you, you'd have to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's like you know handheld. It's it's cool. It's fun. They come in different colors and different materials and stuff like that. But um, I've been working on that for a while too. And the poetry, I write music and. I I just do a lot. I don't feel like I should have any, you know, limits. If I want to try it, I'm going to do it. And I've even done, like, you know, the regular life. I've managed a law firm, executive assistant to um, a private business finance company. Like, I'm, I'm smart. I do everything. I'm even in private investigations. So, I, why not? You are a jack of all trades. Yes. <laughs> so what is it you do? Like, I don't know how you do all that, but I just, I, I do. I just, I do what I like. Well, I, well I I'm the same way. About, I stay working. I, I stay working. I love working. To me, working yeah. is fun. I'm one of the people who I, I, I'm one of the few people I think in America who does what he loves to do. And I truly love it. Yeah, that's always good to find something you love to do. And that's what I think that's what started me on the path I'm on is because I didn't really, you know, growing up how I did, I lost most of my childhood. So I didn't get a chance to kind of like find myself and, you know, things I liked and, and whatnot. So I had to like kind of figure out like what is it that I want to do and like what, is, what about me? And, you know, that's kind of why I kind of went on this journey of, you know, trying a lot of different things. And then I was like, you know, I actually like this. Like, this is what I like to do. I like to just do different things. Cause I get bored. It's like, all right, I know what now I want to do something else. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just how I am. I, I, I like that, that context. Now being 32 years old, being in the business, as long as you have one, I want to find out 
do you want a family? And if so, do I mean, do you want kids and all that stuff? And, and do you feel like this idea of that, that silly, you know, that phrase, the clock is ticking. Do you feel like that, like you're on the clock? Mm, I don't really feel like I'm on the clock. I do want a family. I do want kids. But I'm kind of old school when it comes to that. Like, you know, in, in how I want to raise my kids. Like, y'all need to go outside and play, drink water from the water hose, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. How I grew up, like, these kids nowadays, just like the video games and TV raises them. And I, I need to find a man who we agree upon you know, to me, that's very important. We agree upon how to raise a family and that we can work together to build not only our family, but ourselves. Like, I want to get a dude that, you know what, you want to do this business venture or whatever, like, let's do this together. Like, that's how I am. We, we're going to do a business. We're going to do whatever. What is it that you want to do in life? What is it that I want to do? We're just going to support each other. We need to be able to hold each other down and just ride with each other. Like, if you're going to get mad and leave on some dumb shit. Like, don't fuck with me. Cause it, it's not, <laughs> that's not where I'm at. I like that. I like that. When, when it comes to dating, like people get mad at Tiger Woods for dating a black woman, I mean, a white woman, which doesn't make any sense. Cause the man's mama is not even black, but black women have been mad. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense. Cause if that's the case, then they should get mad at Barack Obama for dating a black woman because his mama's white. They should say you, you are a sellout. <laughs> but when it comes to you dating, what is it? What, do, are you allowed to like date a, anyone? Or are you one of those people that's open to dating people? Because I hear a lot of people say, you know, black women, we, we're loyal to our black men. Do you have a preference in men? I'm trying to see if I fit it. <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, most of my life, I've only dated black men. I think I've dated like one Italian dude before. Um, but I'm that's just my attraction. Nice. Like, and I've seen a couple of, you know, white dudes that have been, I've been attracted to or whatever, thought he was cute and not and whatnot. But um, I think I, I've tried, you know, here and there, and I see a white dude, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to try this or whatever. And I'm just, with a black man, I feel like I just relate, you know, in upbringing and, and things of that nature. And that's what I'm comfortable with. And I think it's just a matter of stepping out of your comfort zone sometimes. Um, so that's why you said don't let these Negroes. So that's why you said don't let these Negroes fool you by saying that they like all this ass because you get hit on by a lot of black men, right? Oh, yeah. And you know what's crazy is that I have a couple of black, you know, friends or whatever, or, you know, even guys I've dated, and they're like, you're like the closest thing to a black girl I've ever dated. Really? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, like, and yeah, like they're, you know, on the white girls or the, or the, you know, the Brazilians and, you know, all that stuff. So it's like, you know, it's a mixture of the two, but at the same time, they're still fuck on me. So it's like. Yeah, you, you like black girl light. You know, like Michelob light. You like black girl light. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You, know, yeah, you, you know, get none of the after effects, you know, because because you, you know there's a stigma amongst uh, the, the black women in, in in America, especially that they are aggressive and like you're not coming across that way at all. You're not bullshitting me. You're not telling me about your damn 4.0 GPA because every black girl I've ever talked to on this show that is a model always brings up her damn 4.0 GPA. That's because we they always have to fight stereotypes. See, and, and myself too, but I just, I decide not to fight them. I'm like, you can think what you want to think of me. It, your thoughts will not affect my world. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, we, mama, we always have to, oh, you're a hoe, that you fucked your way through this way or that way or into that magazine or this magazine or, you know, whatever. You cut the homie, all the, all the extra, <laughs> you know, extra You have to, it, it's always just there because, our people are just so small minded nowadays. It's just extra ridiculous. So um, I understand why they say that, but at the same time, you know, and that's why I say I'm strong is that I'm strong enough to be like, I don't give a fuck what you're talking about right now. 
I, I like that. I mean, I'm I'm really very impressed with you, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know who I'm speaking with, I'm speaking with Miss Patrice Hollis. She is Playboy's 2007 Playmate. Uh, what do you see for yourself in the future? And I always give my guests a chance to um, answer the show topic as well as stay on with the phone calls if they like. But what do you see? What where's where's your future taking you? First off. Well, you know, um, like I said, I'm finishing up my book, so it's not a huge book, just a little small poetry book. Um, and I have a sexual mind, so it's very, uh, it's sexual poetry. It's kind of, some of it's kind of explicit, but it's like real life. Like, when you read it, you can envision the thing that's going on. And, you know, at first I was kind of iffy about putting it out because, you know, I didn't want everybody to think that I was some type of extra. <laughs> you know, I was like, no, nah, that's a little... I'm not into the porn and I like that, but um, how did you stay time, away from it? Like, I, surely they ask you. It's not me. Yeah, no, that's not me. That's too far. I draw my line. A new a picture, you know, a, a, not just a picture. A very tasteful, like beautiful picture is cool. But once you get to distasteful pictures, you, you already cross the line. So the whole extra that's behind it is not even relevant. So. Nice. Yeah, no, I'm I'm cool on that. <laughs> I keep that in my room, you know. <laughs> I like you. I, I want to ask you again. Uh, we're, we're there's a question that we have, and the show topic is about black problems. You know, like they, we're in the age of where in the '80s they were telling the whole world that black men were gay and in jail and on the down low, and now you have a a, a, a change where men are now bringing forth their issues. And a lot of people are saying things, especially like to me, they're saying these issues shouldn't be brought out in a space of where mixed company is. Other people shouldn't hear it. But my thoughts on that was they already hear it. It's not like something's going on amongst black people and nobody else hears it or knows it exists. So let me ask you, what are your thoughts when you see like these black people discussing black issues? Do you think that's something that should be held in house or do you think these are real discussions that everyone should be a part of? I think that if, unless you strictly only hang around black people, any company, you know, you're in is mixed company. Yep. So what's the difference? Yeah. I, I believe, I mean, like, like people get mad at me. Like we've, had, has, we've had guests on the show yeah. and the guests will be white and they're talking about the situation. I'm like, why not? You act like they don't live next door to you. You act like they don't go to Starbucks with you. Why is it that we're trying to pretend that only one group of people can discuss something when we discuss their problems? I think that um, it's become uncomfortable for some people because of the restrictions that it has been put on them. True. Um, you can't say this because you're not this, so you can't speak on it. Nice. So, I mean, that's my thoughts on it. But I feel like I'm the type of person, I work with, you know, white men every day in my regular life of, you know, and they're executives and, you know, all the extra stuff. But they, we talk freely about it. Like, you know, and they know, they know I'm going to be straight up with them. Yep. But it's a matter of respecting each other's opinions. And, um, I think that's the key to it, to a conversation of, of that caliber is respect. I like that. I like that. Um, well, we always give people the option to stick around for a little bit of the show as long as they like. We're about to head into our next break. But I tell you what, you are welcome to stick around, answer some phone calls, and talk with us if you like. Or you can leave with some fabulous gifts and prizes. <laughs> no, I'll stick around. I'm interested to hear um, people's opinions and you know, your show go on. All right, good deal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know the number is 347-989-8310. When we come back, we're going to take your phone calls, and I'm going to be joined by the beautiful Miss, as I said, my letter P, Miss Patrice Hollis is going to be here. So call in the number is 347-989-8310. You guys know who I am? You know what this is. This is your world. <laughs> We'll be back faster than it takes Mel Gibson to ruin a marriage and a career. Your world, my view. Keep it locked. It's the way you bring out the sun. It's the way you make it all fun. Know who makes the day sunny? My mom and Sunny D. 
I love the taste. Mom loves the vitamin C. And now it has 40% fewer calories than most regular soda brands. Sunny D. Drink up and download free music. Find out more at SunnyD.com. It's new. Oh. It's nice and easy. Color blend and foam. Permanent color with tones and highlights. Now in a delightful foam. Just reshape. Foam it. Love it. Plus Mario Kart Wii, a Wii Wheel accessory, and more. Now for just $149.99. Rated E for everyone. I'm Phil Mickelson, pro golfer. If you have painful, swollen joints, I've been in your shoes. One day I'm on top of the world. The next I'm saying, I have this uh, thing called psoriatic arthritis. I had some uh, intense pain. It progressively got worse. My rheumatologist told me about Embril. I'm surprised how quickly my symptoms have been managed. Because Enbrel suppresses your immune system, it may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, and nervous system and blood disorders have occurred. Before starting Enbrel, your doctor should test you for tuberculosis and discuss whether you've been to a region where certain fungal infections are common. Don't start Enbrel if you have an infection like the flu. Tell your doctor if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if while on Enbrel, you experience persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Get back to the things that matter most. Good job, girls. Ask your rheumatologist if Enbrel is right for you. Don't worry, Lucky. These Wheat Thins Crunch Sticks will save us. Look! Wheat Thins Crunch Sticks. Try our new flavors. You know, there's so many great things about being a Fulpata representative. The culture of this company, along with our incredible sterling silver, sets us apart from anybody else. If I knew what Sulpata could do for me when I had young children, I would be telling you, you need to sell Sulpata now. The financial opportunity has been beyond my wildest expectation. Starting my Sulpata business was so easy. The best part about Sulpata are the parties because you don't have to sell it, you just have to wear it. Go into a party with your jewelry, your catalogs, and your smile. This is a business that's so flexible. You're the boss. You're in control. You're in the driver's seat. It's the easiest thing I've ever done that rewards me for being me. I'm a Sopata woman. I'm a Sopata woman. I am a Sopata woman, and I live life in style. And now, more from the man that's able to make even his own dog question their friendship. Your host, Tommy Sotomayor. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. I've been joined by the beautiful, the fabulous, and I am really loving her disposition. Miss Patrice Hollis, she's joining us. Hello, Miss Hollis. Hi. Good deal. What we're going to do is we're going to answer some of you guys' phone calls, get you guys' thoughts on not only the topic, but whatever it is you want to talk about. So let's bring in uh, Jessica from the 862. Jessica, what is going on? You are live on the air. Jesse. All right, let's go past Jessica. Let's go to Tobias from the 843. Tobias, you are live on the air. I want to make sure you get me back. Why was that part expecting me to pay for it? Why would we just pass that around? And Tobias is talking. In the <laughs> <laughs> this would be the day that everybody's talking and shit. And doing some, Tobias is getting cussed out. I don't know what's going on. Aquia, Aquia from the 404, what is going on? 
is this just that day why I pick up the phone and everybody <laughs> just don't say shit? Aquia, 404. You know what? Let's try. Let's just try. Greg, damn, the lines are full and y'all just doing whatever the fuck y'all want to do. Greg, from the 202. What's up, Greg? Hey, what's up, man? None much. Oh, finally, somebody picks up. Greg, what's on your mind? <laughs> oh, you're talking about uh, brothers and uh, talking about uh, our issues. Yeah, do you think um, it's wrong to talk about black issues in front of mixed company? No, we shouldn't, man, because uh, white folks don't tell you their, their shit. Asians don't tell you what's going on in the Asian community. But for some reason, we brothers always got to tell everybody, you know, they already know what the fuck we're doing, man. It's all it's on the evening news every night, <laughs> you know, shit. So, you know, we fuck up, talk to each other about what's going on. And um, because we're the only ones that can solve our problems anyway, black folks. Ain't nobody else going to solve it for us. And uh, we, 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 we need to have some cultural privacy, you know, and so give me some give, amongst do, ourselves. Well, give, me a, do me, give me an idea of like the, the things you're thinking, like imagine, look at the things that I do. Do you think that the things that I do are like detrimental to the black community? And well, actually, no, actually, Tommy, I actually think you um, bring up a lot of things that really need to be said. Hmm. About what's going on in the black community, and but it's been everyone's been silent about it for at least thirty years. I'm forty seven, mm -hmm. and this has just been going on since the eighties. Yes. Since I was, you know, seventies. I remember eighties. This just been going on for a long time. But you actually bring it up, and this is the same shit we talk, you know, in the barber shop. We talk about the same shit. Yep. But you bring it up, man, and keep doing what you're doing, bro. Oh. But as far as bringing in white folks, no, uh, Asians. No, they, they need to just mind their own business. We need to just deal with our own shit among ourselves, and that's it, and draw the line. And as far as this lady, I mean, I don't know. She, I don't know, man. I was just, I mean, she, she should have been talking about her career instead of this nigga ain't shit stuff when she started on, you know. I, I'm just saying stuff like that. We really shouldn't be doing. Well, you, you know what well, Which lady are you talking on, about? You, yeah, I'll let her speak, but you, I think you may have mischaracterized what she said. What part did you think what she said, you know, that, that you know, niggas ain't shit? Well, she's talking about her dad, and, I mean, it's culpability, man. You know, if, if, if you have a father that ain't shit, your mom probably ain't shit either. It goes hand in hand. And just to take, attack one side of it, I don't think it's fair to the father. Actually, hold on. I'm going to speak for myself. And, I can attack one side of it. Can you hear me? Yeah, he can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I heard you clearly. Okay. Yeah, I didn't attack one side of it. If you recall, I actually said, yeah, my mom kept going back. And I, I also mentioned her fault and her blaming it also. So I, I did both sides. I didn't favor That's what mom, I mean by but I cultural I did answer you know, the that, questions I was asked, though. Tommy, that's what I mean by cultural privacy. Like, you would never hear, like, a white person, because they have issues and shit. You're not going to hear a, a fucking white boy. Or, or uh, Pamela Anderson talking about her uh, brand. Well, they actually, well, well, wait, 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 wait. That's the shit you, you, you keep behind closed well, doors, wait, wait, man. Wait, 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 hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. What the fuck hold, you doing? Hold on a second. I want to... I wanna, um challenge you on that that's actually untrue white people talk about they growing up got beat and how dad wasn't crap i mean macaulay calkin divorced his parents uh lindsey lohan talked crap about her parents that's actually one of the things that they have to cough they're able to say if they believe they had a bad childhood they can say it in the open blacks actually are the people who can't do it and what's your what's your your race i'm black i'm a brother Oh, okay. I'm a black man. I'm not a white boy. I'm a black man. So I didn't. I didn't say but, you were. I just asked a question. Uh, I know. Yeah. You get I'm something. Just you, you. But well, let me ask you something. Uh -huh. like, like you've heard that yeah. question. You've heard that question before, haven't you? Like, if you if you're having a phone conversation, they've they've guessed your race, correct? Well, Tommy, as you know. As a black man, and you're going to work uh, in America, you got to have a very decent vocabulary, or you're not going to get anywhere. All right, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Exactly. If I am, a, I'm, I am an electrician, and if I'm talking to a client using advice, they're not going to hire me for a job. So exactly. you're going to have a decent command of vocabulary, or you're not going to get far in this world. But that's, don't you think that's, that's weird? 
But I'm yeah. just asking, the reason I ask that is because don't you think it's weird yeah. that when you do speak English correctly or speak it well in the American diction, you yeah. get called, or you you white boy, you're trying to be white, and that's something yeah. that we... Uncle Tom, yes. sell out house nigga. <laughs> right, and think about how weird yeah. that is. So when you say yeah. things like, like keep it amongst ourselves, I feel where you're coming from, but it's very hard to keep yeah. it amongst ourselves when we're so judgmental amongst ourselves. I, I didn't ask for I didn't ask for the yeah. reason that uh, I didn't I wasn't judging him on how he sounded or anything like that. I was asking for the simple purpose of I wanted to know what what race that racial background his you know he was coming from and and, and related to what he was saying. Tommy never asked that question. How come you didn't ask that? How come you didn't ask me that, Tommy? What because Tommy knew I was a brother. Right. Well, yeah, I, right I, well, yeah, I, I assume that the my reason first time I ever being on this show, I don't know you. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, well, I, I don't know I don't him either, but I, I just went by the, I just went by the topic and the way he was discussing it. And I could have been completely wrong, but I guess I just went by what he was saying when he kept saying, we need to, we need to, I assumed he was talking from a standpoint of being black when he kept saying, we right, need to do this. And, and I completely understand that. But at the same time, sometimes people, do or say things to, you know, fit in a certain scale or whatever, and then it's like, well, wait, what? Because they're chief behind, you know, he's on the phone. You can't see him in person. No, you're right, but if so he was trying to portray that, then he would say... That's where I was coming from. Right, I but if you no, I I, 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 feel I, you. I wasn't even accusing you of that. What I was saying to him is when he laughed, I knew he had gotten that question before. Um, so that's why I want to elaborate. <laughs> yeah, because I've gotten that question before. And it's weird that I have to drop the tone of voice when I'm around black folks just to not get called he trying to be white. And I think that's kind I of I don't do that. Mm-hmm. I don't do that, Tommy. Fuck that. I'm a, so, I mean, years ago I should do that, you know, but now <clears throat> I'm not going to change my vocabulary to, to fit in with some fucking idiot. Uh, them days are over, man. I, I'm gonna, you know what, Tommy, what we ought to do is that, man, we need, we need to elevate ourselves a little bit. Make these brothers come up to our level and set Having to go down to their, to their fucked up eighth grade vocabulary. I mean, we we gotta stop that, man. Well, that's you what know, I loved I about what. Pa- against it. Yeah. Well, that's what I loved about what Patrice Thank was you. saying. Patrice kept saying, "I have a standard. I don't care what everyone else is doing. I have a standard. You can do what you want." What's her standard? Yeah. Well, What's well she was saying there were certain things that she wouldn't do. Like she was saying her. <laughs> no, I was talking. I see what she was talking. She said she wants an old fashioned dude. And do shit proper. Yes, she's taking off her clothes for dollars. Wait, 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 D- defame people based upon something and, and, and especially when it comes to this when someone says you want an old fashioned dude because you t- and you take off your clothes last I checked and it's just me I'm, maybe I'm stupid last I checked Sharon Stone took off her clothes last I checked there's a lot of people took off their clothes and if we're saying Helen Marin took off her clothes in uh, Caligula if we're going to say this let's say it across the board Let's not just find a black woman and just attack her for taking off her clothes, but when the white women do it in the movies, for somehow it's okay. Go ahead, dear. But what they don't understand are models who are like uh, Heidi Klum, Tyra Banks, Naomi Campbell. Yep. In that world of modeling, they do nude shoots. They do the same thing I do. The only reason why somebody finds something wrong with it that what I did is because the name Playboy is attached to it. But if GQ or Vanity Fair was attached to it, it'd be a whole different story. Uh, that that bothered me a little bit because there's no reason, to, if we're trying to say that we want to have dialogue amongst just black people, but then we're going to talk like that, then why would you want to right. just talk to black but people? He's educated and very well-spoken, but just because you're well-spoken, it doesn't mean that you should, you know, use your words to uh, attack somebody else. Really well, especially when my thing is, if I'm going to show how educated I am, that's why I don't talk about how educated I am in the midst of me cussing somebody <laughs> out. Seriously, it's a, yeah. it's it's an oxymoron to be cussing like a sailor and tell somebody <laughs> how educated I am. What the heck is that? It's simple-minded people. It's okay though. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that's cool. We're gonna bring in some more calls, uh, guys. 
if you're going to get on, on the line, do, do show a bit, a bit of respect just to try and throw off your whatever it is you have on someone else. To me, is one of the most irritating things in the world. Let me bring in McBib from the 478. What up, McBib? What's going on, TJ? Not much. You're on the line with myself and Patrice. Now, what did you think about that last caller? Did I did I judge him harshly? Because if I gave him a lot of rope, and you guys know that I give I, I give the men a lot of rope, I give the women a lot of pipe. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 well, that was a good one. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you, you have the, you have the person got to know the perimeters, you know. Um, Do you think he had I a mean, point? I'm not saying he had a. a no, point. I'm just wondering. I'm, just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if maybe I might have overreacted. I'm trying to get your thoughts, uh, Patrice, and I want to know. I mean, were we were we viewing that wrong? And 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 and, and every, not just the one thing he did, but everything he talked about. The idea that blacks should keep their troubles, their pains, their distresses within house, and he said that white people don't talk about how their parents were bad, which was a complete lie. That's not actually not true. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I probably have this, maybe maybe to an extent we should, but then again, I mean, if we would have done that twenty, thirty years ago, we wouldn't have the problems now. But the thing is, you know, well, you shouldn't talk about how we act and all, you know, how black men are, you know, like this, wear their pants a certain way, or or like black women have bad attitudes. I mean, they've known about this since since jungle fever, since diver of mad black woman, since the you know way next hell. Right. I mean, it's no longer a secret anymore. Like, if you think about it, in movies like, um, let's say, um, A Time to Kill, they expose racist whites. Mm -hmm. They don't hide that. Yeah. Of course. So, I mean... Because we know they... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know they exist. We're not saying that every white person is racist. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, if people say we shouldn't say it because people, it might reveal something that they don't know, <laughs> they already know. <laughs> that's what usually happens. Now, let me ask you about the whole idea of, of, of what was, was being spoken about with Patrice and I, did you mm -hmm. find a problem with the fact, do you feel like we speak ill about fathers more than mothers? Do you, how do you feel about what the guy said and her response of that? She understands that they were both sides doing it, that she was just answering the question. What are your thoughts on the whole idea of how we speak about our mothers and fathers? Cause you know where I stand on this. Well, yeah, well, I mean, people. Well, I would have to. Say, I mean, I didn't get into the the story that much because I, had some, you know, had some crackling in the phones, you know, breaking in and out. But, but I, I mean, people are gonna talk ill more about fathers more than mothers anyway. Just, just nationwide, all across the board, nationwide. You know, I mean, whether it's whether it's you know, uh, whether it's gonna be one of those way next up type movies or black film or whether it's Dr. Phil or Dr. Drew it's you know father's just not respected but but the difference is in the African American community not only it's almost like it's not only it's not only it's expected but it's practically celebrated you know true that's I mean I mean even you yourself why why they have all the BT at like three four five black girls rock specials but not one black boys rock you know they got all those magazine covers. The new one that uh, Jill Scott, uh, being a single parent, they, almost every black woman in Hollywood has done a spread on some silly ass magazine talking about the yeah. day, how great it is to be a single parent. I'm like, this is weird. Yeah, I know. I mean, you remember Fantasia had a song? What was it like five, seven, eight years ago called "Baby Mama"? It had all these yes. women, about, you know. Hi, I'm a Creaser. I'm a baby mama. Like, like. Like is they in an AA meeting? Hi, I'm a <laughs> Patricia. I'm, I'm Shirley, and I'm a baby mama. Hi, I'm a baby mama. Hi, yo soy la yando. Yo tengo, yo tengo un baby mama. You know, whatever. You know, whatever it is. And then two years later, she had a song called Hot Boy. It's like, isn't it kind of contradictory? It's like, chick, if you weren't dating a bad boy, a hot boy, you wouldn't be a baby mama. You know. It's Jeez. it's crazy. I'll tell you what. This was uh, this is a very good call here, brother McBeal. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask uh, Patrice a question. Sure. Patrice, how do you deal with people when they approach you that way with the with the negative connotation of what you do? How do you are are you expecting that when you meet people, and how do you deal with it? Um, it's always in the back of my mind because some people, you know, they they're ignorant and they're gonna say what they gotta say. But I'm witty, 
So I usually come back with a little something that shuts them up, but um, without being disrespectful. But at the same time, I look at people like that as I wonder what skeletons, like skeletons, they have in their closet yes. while they're talking about me for something that I'm I'm open about and comfortable with and not hiding because I don't view it as something, you know, negative. So I, I just wonder. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I go in your closet, what am I going to pull out? I always you think you're talking that. about. I always wanted the same thing. But, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. I just look at them as small-minded, ignorant people who are trying to get some shine in their 15 seconds, and you just let them have it because, like I said, they're not going to affect my life. But they, they're not putting no money in my pocket. <laughs> they're not taking care of my household. They're not paying none of my bills. They're not paying my car notes. They're not paying my mortgage. They're not paying, you know, you're not taking any part of me with you I because agree. you want to be stupid and ignorant you do that that's fine because everybody around you is looking at you the same way i am whether you think you're like ha 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 funny or you know you put me in my place or whatever the case may be like you look like a fool well that's so the sad I'm part that there's some people out, well that's the sad part to me that there are people out there cheering on that behavior of someone who is attacking someone that's not attacking them Right. That's the point. It's, it's like if you're you're a forty. The guy was like forty seven. He said you're a forty seven year old bully. Like really? Yep. Go to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. At that point, yeah, that's when it, I, I was like, well, wait a minute. There's no reason to say all that crap. I don't know where that's coming from. But like, you and said, I'm sure he he probably googled my pictures and all extra stuff. So I hope you enjoy whoever you are. <laughs> Let me bring in my man, the real R J. Real R J. Who is the fake? Uh, JR, excuse me, the fake JR. Who's the fake one? Yo, 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 Tommy. Yeah, yo, Tommy, 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 Tommy. What up, big dog? Hey, man, you know, hey, you know, I was on, I was on your timeline today. You know, you know that, right? Yeah. What, what, what were you on there All looking right. at? What, what got your attention? What bothered you? Know what? You? you know what, man? You know what? I, I, mean, I, I look at, I look at things that you're saying and everything, and you know what? You tell the truth. Oh, really? Okay. So you tell the truth. Why, okay, then maybe you can help me out. Why are people so offended right. at what I do and what I say? Because they ain't smart enough to understand what you're saying. You get where I'm coming from? I understand. Do you? I think there's a there's a big, like, it's like how the caller spoke with Patrice just a second ago. I think there's this huge fight to me for people to feel superior, and they will find anything to feel superior against someone else in order to just hide or mask a, as she said, a flaw in their life. What do you think? Well, let me put it to you in the old man's terms, okay? Because, you know, I'm 55, dog, you know, so let me tell you, let me put it to you like this. When a person thinks that they are superior, they really are inferior because they don't understand what the hell they're talking about. You know, Miss Patrice, all I got to say to you is you keep doing what you're doing. That's your thing. All right? Thank you're doing you. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you. I ain't got nothing to say against that. And I ain't going to talk mad about that. That's your life. We've lost that ability, I think. We've lost the ability to say this person has the right to do whatever it is they want to do and blah, blah, blah. As long as they're not violating any children or any law at a certain point in time, you got to let it go. If you know most of my stories are literally about the violation of children or the violation of laws. Okay. Now, let me say something about that because there, there's a problem I have with these people wishing the bad on your daughter. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm a father. I got two daughters. And guess what? I wish they would wish that shit on me. It's one of the I most difficult. Well, it's one of the most difficult parts of my job. It's one of the, because I have people who know things about me. Like I said, when they gave out my um my family's addresses, when you know a, a person is getting death threats and you openly do, it's one of the things that made me lose respect for Spike Lee. When he put out that George Zimmerman's address and he ended up putting out the wrong address, 
To me, it shows you're Correct. a coward. Correct, I remember that. Yeah, you remember, it shows you're a coward. Because if you really wanted to do something to George Zimmerman, you'd have done it yourself. But because you're such a coward, you put out his address, or what you thought was his address, hoping that some other idiot would go and do something that you weren't brave enough to do yourself. But, Brother T, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why would someone want to put out your address and they can't, I understand you're saying the cowardness, right? Mm -hmm. But why would someone want to put out your address and you haven't done anything wrong to them? Why? What, what's going on with that? I still try to rationalize this and say to myself, surely I have not hit anybody, beaten anyone. I haven't done anything. But then when you look at what just happened to Patrice, Patrice hadn't done anything to anyone. Let me ask Patrice. Patrice, what kind of things have you had to deal with just with this social media thing? Because I don't know how much you follow me, but if you look at some of the crap I deal with, it's amazing. What's some of the things that you've heard or some of the worst things you've heard about yourself or seen about yourself on social media? Um, actually, when Playboy posts like pictures of me on Instagram, mm -hmm. and mind you, like they're like my normal like everyday picture or something, or us at an event or something like that. Um, I get the racial, I get the nigger, <laughs> I wow. get, you know, all, yeah, there, oh, she's a black playmate, like, I get, I get all the racial flirt from, for being black in Playboy, like, I deal with that on a day-to-day -day on social networking, Jeez. you know, and it's just, it's ridiculous, and I just laugh, I'm like, and most, you know what's really sad is that most of them are kids. Really? And I'm like, they're kids, they're teenage kids or whatever on this social networking stuff. And it's just like, you know what? And, and me, how I grew up, I'm like, if I ever see you in person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I'm going to teach you. And it's not about putting hands on them like that. It's just like, you know, really speaking to these kids. Like, where are the parents at? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, you, I get a lot of the racial you know, straight up racial slurs and, and, you know, you a hoe or whatever, but I know, I know who I'm, I am or I'm not sleeping with and I know who, you know, I'll never have that question of who's my, the father of my kids. Like I, it's <laughs> never going to happen. So, you know, just all that extra stuff or yeah, the, you know, you get naked for money. Actually, you know, I did that once. Now I have a career. You know, wow. so I guess I did it for a career and I did it to save mine and my sister's livelihood, you know, so we weren't in a worse situation than we were. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I have no regret. So, but yeah, those are, those are the main things. That's crazy. When you think about, um, and right now JR and, and is on the line with myself and Patrice, when you think about the things that you've had to deal with social media, because I tell people all the time, it doesn't bother me to, to admit it. Sometimes I've read some things or seen some things about me that really, really bother me that there's this, either this misconception or that the fact that these people are allowed to just say things without impunity. And that's the great thing about social media is you can sell yourself to a bunch of people really quick. The bad thing is, is a lot of people who don't know you can hide behind the their keyboard and become keyboard gangsters. When you are dealing, oh, yeah. when you're dealing with people like that, how do you stay grounded and not let it affect you? Because there's some nights when I've literally not been able to sleep due to the fact that the crap that I've been getting. I mean, well, Tommy. Oh, oh. Uh, well, but I'll let Patrice answer that. I'll let Jr. jump in. Go ahead, Patrice. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I, it used to bother me, like when I first became a playmate and stuff like that. Like I used to be like, "Wow, like you know, that really hurt my feelings," or or whatever, and then I had to realize, like, I had to look at it from a different view of, you know what, you can type whatever, if you're not bringing it to my face, you're not saying nothing to me. That's just what it is. You're not saying nothing because the cowardly words, they can't hold any weight. And you sit in my mind, I could, I could go back and forth with you all day and, you know, tweet you back or whatever back and I mean we then we when I look just as stupid as you you know I just I just end up I just block them and move on 
that that's crazy. But yeah, it used to like I said, it used to bother me. Uh, and then I just had to, to learn, just to, like, just to piggyback on that, did it make you realize how black you were at that point? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my mom calls me her little, you know, quote unquote, ghetto child because I'm, uh, I'm not like, you know, an industry book while fighting everybody or whatever. But you know, I'm, I'm not scared to you. Like, I'm not gonna just take no mess. So, but I'm not gonna go start it either. You know, I have to get to be classy and and keep it cool. But mm-hmm. bring it to me. <laughs> yeah, Jr. Yeah. We, we yeah. Have it. Yeah, like I, like I said, Tommy, I, I I don't believe in having no Twitter fights. You know, you understand that. You know, mm-hmm. because uh, you know what I'm going to do. As soon as somebody says something stupid to me, that block button works pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> block, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. You know, because but you know what? I like what you say because the things that you say are the truth. Dig where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. You know, because when when you when you're saying that stuff that you say. You know, and when I'm listening to what you what you're doing, and get this, I'm I'm a few years older than you are, so I listen to what see what a young man has to say about what's going on in life, and you know what you what you're saying is the truth. Okay, I got a daughter your age, man, so you know where I'm coming from. Right. All right, and uh, the things that you do or what you say and the things that these uh, like I call, like I told you today where do you get these damn pterodactyls from because <laughs> and, I don't and isn't it amazing I, I don't know. but think about it Jerry isn't it amazing that, right? to just watch my timeline and watch the crap that goes on on it not all the time today I did it, I normally don't do that you know I watch to see what videos you post and I listen to the videos you know, I watch the videos, but today I went on your timeline. I don't know why I did it, but, you know, hey. It's pure entertainment. It was is. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so watch the stuff people say to me is freaking amazing. So, so bro, keep on doing what you do because I'm going to be there with you. All right? Well, I thank you, JR. Thank you so much for the call. Hey, send me an email at tj at yourworldmyviews.com. We're going to send you out a gift package. How about that? All right. I'll that's what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're having a good time. We've got a couple more minutes before we go to the break and hopefully a couple more minutes with Patrice. Patrice has been answering a question, and I was being funny when I said that. But honestly, do, do you think that a lot of when you look at yourself, and it's, it's a weird position, why do you think whites are so, who do you, if you had to ask, who's harder on mixed people, whites or blacks? Hmm. You know what? I'm. I don't know. I will say this, and I, this may ruffle some feathers, but and it's 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 just me being honest. And literally, this happened to me last Friday. Me and I have a friend. She's like Dominican, you know, light skin, whatever. So um, we were just having fun walking. I live in Vegas, so we, you know, playing tours, walking the strip with our fat Tuesdays, and just having a good time. And this happens to me more often than, I don't know, than it should, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because, like, I I don't look at whether mixed light girls are better than dark. I I have a couple of friends that are dark and they're beautiful, you know. So to me, I don't care. I don't care about, you know, how dark or how light you are or whatnot. My daddy's dark skin. My mom is light skin. So I grew up where it didn't make a difference. But... I find a lot of, like, the darker girls, like, they'll walk past and we just having our own the time and, and they walk past and, like, a group of them and they looking us up and down and, like, you know, rolling their eyes and we're like, what do we do, <laughs> you know? Have and you I, gotten, have you had one of them tell you you think you're all that? When I was younger, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm grown now, so... I, I haven't had that, but when I was younger, I, my hair was, you know, really, really long, got like right above my butt. And, then, um, so I did have issues with, with girls, you know, wanting or, you know, saying those type of things and I'm um, thinking all that cause my hair is long or stuff like that. But I mean, I think it's just the way that 
it, it starts one place and it, it's just like a virus and it stems, it just grows and it grows. And then we, we have those little bacteria that are raising more, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, and it's a vicious cycle where I think, I don't care what race you are. I think all people are beautiful. It's just, you know, you know, we all have our preference because there's some, we, somebody can look at you and the girl be like, oh, he's fine. And then in the same, you know, another, her sister be like, girl, no. You know, so it just, it's a personal preference. I don't think it should be skin color or how long some men, some women like short hair, long hair, bald, tall, dark, light, whatever the case may be, like it, it's personal preference. It shouldn't be about skin color. I just think it's funny to me that black women force mixed women to call themselves black. Like, are you black like us? But as soon as like guys start choosing the mixed chick, over the black chicks, they'll get mad and call the black dude color struck. But I'm like, but you said we're all black. How the hell am I color struck? I just like that kind of black. Just be, I mean, it, nobody would get mad because you choose dark chocolate over regular chocolate. Who the fuck is going to sit there and the chocolate seller is going to start arguing and saying you color struck? I think it's more of Hollywood and what, uh, what it's selling. And, you know, some of the more... They, 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 in Hollywood, it's like, you know, if you're lighter skin, have long curly hair or whatnot, then they book you more than, you know, they have more roles for that. They, because to them, it's exotic. But to blacks is the and problem, though. But to us, it's a problem. Right, I was a child. I heard so, black girls but, say that they wanted to sleep with the mixed child so they could have uh, the, the mixed boy so they can have good hair. You hear black women refer to light skinned men as pretty boys. They are struck but that's with color. What I'm saying. It's, it's something that is taken from one place and in ground into another. So it's like it's a, it's a cycle. And it does, I don't think it actually stems from black people. I think it stems from outside, things yes. outside the quote unquote black community that are now taken in. And then, you know, the, it, all this extra stuff comes up. Like, like, how do you deal with the idea of when you think of something like, like I've heard uh, light skinned girls and I did a video and they all came and talked about how growing up light, a light skinned girl was hard because like they, they had people pick fights with them or accuse them of trying to take their man, accuse them of thinking that they all that, accuse them of, them of thinking that they better than them. And they'll be like, I literally did not do a thing, but I had to almost back away or tone myself down just to fit in with people. Did you have any of that? I had a little bit, but I think it's just other people's insecurities and those insecurities come from society. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I honestly, I myself have seen some black models or, you know, actresses or whatever, and I'm like, like, and when I say, and just like, you see the light skin ones, and you see that, and I'm I see people like you know Gabrielle Union and and you know the the tennis star, and I'm just like ah oh, they're beautiful, like and I'd be like damn they're prettier than me if that's the case, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's not about really that whole like prettier than now. I'm just saying like I feel like she's you know I don't think I'm the prettiest girl in the world, you know, but I know I'm not. I I'm comfortable with myself, and I yeah I think I'm pretty. But I, I look at other women and I'm like, wow, her features are just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's, to me, that's reality. Like, if you go around thinking that you top not shit and ain't nothing better than you or whatever, then you need to, you know, bring yourself down a little bit. Because, it, it, and again, it goes to preference, but at the same time, it's like there is something that, you know, everybody has their own insecurities and it's just, I think we should stop putting them on other people and deal with them within ourselves. All right. I always make a comment. I always make a comment. I want to get your opinion on it. I said, uh, this is how I feel. I believe that when blacks accept mixed people, it dilutes their, their, their ability to be a cohesive unit. And the reason I say this is because there's a reason why whites won't accept anybody. Even, I mean, a white man can have a baby with a black woman. And it'll be his own baby and he won't call it white. And it comes from him. He'll call it black. He won't even call it mixed. He'll say it's a black child. 
Now, there's a I reason why they're willing to would. put their stuff off on other people, but the other people are taking it willy nilly. We're taking people who don't even look black and calling them black. Mariah Carey doesn't look black at all, but she gets to say she's black. So in that instance, right. what happens is your children have to fight. When you have to compete to be the top notch black woman, but the person you're competing against don't even look like you, but they call themselves black, it would be the equivalent of me right. competing in the Paralympic in, in the Paralympics and saying, hey, I'm the best paralyzed guy. But they're like, but you're not paralyzed. Doesn't matter. I got all the, I got all the trophies. Right. And that's why I think it goes back to um, that whole, if you have a black father or this much percentage of black in you, then you're black. And I don't believe that to be true. Right. And I think that's where it, you know, like I said, I don't, just, somebody asked me, well, what's your, what do you, what's your race? I'm black and being Chinese and German. That's what, that's what makes me. Without those, I would not be me. I would not be the truth. I would not have the DNA. I would not be me. So why ignore any of it? Yep. And, and people got like, mad at me because yeah, I have a you, saying. I tell, I tell every girl and guy I meet, I say, the first time you tell me that you're mixed is the last time I will allow you to tell me that you're black. Correct. Right. And I don't understand why people get mad about that. Doesn't it make sense? Isn't it like part of the census or whatever? Like back in the day, it was like, if you had this much black in you, then... It was so deep, it was one-eighteenth. It was basically (laughs) one drop. If they could find a motherfucker that was black in your family tree, if they shook that motherfucker and a limb fell off that had some Negro in it, you became Negro even if... But let me tell you why, though. See, whites only uh, occupy 9% of the planet, but they hold all Mm. of the power. So I keep telling people, power is not amassed by your numbers. White people understand if they started claiming everybody is white that was kind of mixed, they'd have a problem because your racial identity would be gone. Blacks don't have a racial identity. That's why our our president of our NAACP is a man that looked white. That's why Soledad O'Brien gets to do black in America and then next week she does Latino in America. You're like, really? (laughs) It's an issue that will never be fixed, unfortunately. It just, that's just. But it, this it is, is why the dark skinned women have a problem with light skinned women, and I can understand that. I would have a problem with them if I have to compete with something that looks nothing like me. The woman that was in, I was right. watching um, Michael Jackson's video, The Way You Make Me Feel, and my daughter was looking at that, the girl. And the girl was supposed to be black. Yeah. And but you're like, I mean, really? No, she's not. Say, I have a, a white shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With, you're like the, you the know, chick is not black, but you're having to compete with that person, and it's not mm-hmm. right. And it's men, we don't do it, but women, they have a harder time because, like you said, Hollywood prefers a darker skinned man. You even hear when they say things like, uh, like the women. You hear them say, "What kind of man do they want when they get married?" What's always in all the fairy tales? The guy's what tall, dark, and handsome. But you've never heard somebody yeah. refer to a woman as dark and beautiful. Matter of fact, the, the right. saying that they say about dark-skinned women is she's pretty for a dark-skinned woman, right? Oh, yeah, that's the worst. I think that's not, I think that's like a backhanded uh, compliment. Yes. <laughs> like, to me, that, that's just rude. You Thank know? you. And I've had stuff like that from white people at certain events and stuff that I've done. You know, like, oh, you're pretty for a black girl. And I'm, and that's me being, you know, the, the me. I'm like, wait. Yep. Excuse me, what did you say to me? That's what was funny. Like, what happened to you is what happened in the movie The Hunger Games. In the movie The Hunger Games, they had, um, I forgot the singer's name, and a, and a little girl, and they both were mixed. And they were playing characters in there. And white people went the fuck off. They were like, I would have felt bad if the, per- the little girl died if she hadn't have been a nigger. And I was like, wow, you think that these people who you never believed were racist, like it comes out of nowhere. And yeah. Is that what kind of happened to you? Like when you got more exposure, you saw racism that you didn't see when you were just a regular person? Oh, yeah, definitely. And then especially, you know, the people who even in a, you know, bookings and things of that nature, like, well, you know, there's not a lot of black playmates. And, and I was one of the most, more popular ones. So, you know, I was getting jobs and stuff like that, but it's only really because they were trying to like, you know, put the Napoleon or New New Pollen, however you say, on there, you Mm -hmm. know, like, so one of each type thing rather than, you know, 
just wanting a beautiful girl. Well, if you think about it, one of the uh, one of um one of my past guests, and she used to uh, co-host on a couple of shows for me. Her name is Rita G. She mm-hmm. looks black. None. Nothing about this woman looks black. But she was paraded around on parade uh, on uh, Howard Stern and and Playboy and many other outlets as a black woman. Nothing about the woman looks black. Period. Right. And it's not fair. It's like they're scared of it. Yeah, well, it's not fair to black actresses if you keep saying, oh, well, we hired a black actress. But the chick looks nothing like you. The only time a black actress gets hired is when they need a fat, loud mouth chick. You ever notice that? The stereotype. Yes. Or the strong, like, homely, you know, yep. woman. Yep. And you think to yourself, I can kind of understand why they would be mad. Can you, in, in, in a little bit of the, a couple of seconds, can you understand why a lot of dark-skinned girls might feel like they're being slighted? Oh, I completely understand. I completely understand. Mm-hmm. But that's why I say, again, you have to, like, I mean, I know it's hard. Like, it, you, you can't let, you know, society, like, control who you are in your life and, you know, how you, you got to know yourself. Like, I'm beautiful regardless of how dark or how light or whatever the case may be. Like, you know, you just have to have that within yourself. And, and I think that's a big issue is, is self-esteem and, and, and just things being ingrained. And you see, you know, guys liking all the, it, men do it too. It, it, and, you know, just liking all the light-skinned girls on the, with the big booties and, you know. It's like hard that, not but, to like a light-skinned girl with a big butt, though. Come on now. There, I mean, they're, they're the typical, what, it's, to me, it's not about the skin color. It's about being exotic. To me, that's the key, is exotic. It's something different. It's something that, you know what I'm saying? It, it's like, wow, it's not the, the typical. Or, that's, to me, that's what it, it's more about, is, is that it's, something, it's exotic. It's considered exotic rather than, you know, what they figure like normal. Like, you know, the, with the white girl, what they would say, like, you know, normal blonde, brown hair, girl next door. But then when you get a white girl with a really big ass and, you know, a nice shape and, you know, like very sharp features and whatever else that doesn't look like the girl next door, she's going to get more attention because she's different. But why do she's you think no one normal. has been able to supplant blonde, blue eyed white women as the standard of beauty. Why do you, if you're saying that about the exotic look, why do you think no one's have been able to supplant the blonde, blue eyed white woman? I think that it's been overdone. Oh, it's, it's going to be some people hate me. It's going to, it's, I think that it's been overdone and it's, and not all of them. I'm not going to put everybody, you know, in the same boat, but nowadays it's like so much like, you know, the, the blonde girl with, blue eyes, whatever, it's like so common. It's become normal, you know, the, that part of it. But um, uh, it, it just, it's hard, to, it's hard to speak on it and just be like one-sided. It's like here you have the normal blonde girl who's like the girl next door with, you know, just the, what do you call the more normal square type chick, and then you have the one that's, you know, doing hustler, I don't want to say hustler, but like King Magazine now, you know, stuff like that, like that, it's a body shape and, and her swag, things of that nature, that, that's my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about uh, cosmetic surgery, implants and stuff like that? Like, would you ever do it? I know you said you're all natural. Do you, how do you feel about people who do it? Especially the ass implants and uh, that's, that's a huge thing now. I say to each their own. I don't have no big booty. I got enough shape to me. I'm happy with myself. And um, I fear for myself when I do get pregnant and have kids because my boobs are going to be outrageously huge. Um, <laughs> do you fear so, them? You know, gravity taking over because that's what happened to big breasts. The gravity, after a while, they, they just get them. Right. And and you know what? I'm I'm scared to go under the knife like that. So that's my whole issue. Like, I'm not going to risk my life to lift a boob. I'm just going to throw on a good bra. Or just have somebody like me that want to hold them all the time. (laughs) 
Bless. I mean, I, he, I, he just owns some of it. You, you honestly, people, you look at people and you're just like, oh my god, because it, you know, it looks just crazy. But at the same time, you know, if that's what you want to do to make yourself feel better. Then I feel you. I mean, we I live and let live. I tell you what, let them yeah. know your Twitter handle and ways that they can get in contact with you. Um, well, my Twitter is Patrice Hollis. It's at Patrice Hollis, P-A-T-R-I-C-E-H-O-L-L-I-S. And my Instagram is at P-H-2013. So um, those two ways are the best ways with social media. And my website will be launched soon. And so that will be another way to see everything I've been working on lately and new pictures and things of that stuff. So. And I don't do any nudes anymore either. So they're all tasteful clothes picture. <laughs> nice, good deal. Well, they're tasteful either way. Uh, We're about to get ready for the second half of the show. We'd love for you to stick around, but I know you might have things to do, so it is up to you, but the, the people who are sitting here on the live stream and the other one on YouTube are saying, keep her around. She's so smart. <laughs> so you're doing a very, you're, you're winning on my crowd, which is a hard thing to do. Uh, that's, I appreciate everybody and, you know, and they're comments or they're good or bad you know it's always entertaining um but i actually do have to, i got puppies in the house and <laughs> yes you do yes go you do yeah i got babies <laughs> and stuff so i'm gonna go handle my business but um thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed myself and uh, i want to thank all the listeners for tuning in and you know hit me on the instagram or twitter and be nice because you will get blocked at the end. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Patrice. And we're going to hopefully be able to do this again. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Miss Patrice Hollis who joined the show. And follow her, please, on Twitter at P A T R I C E H O L L I S. We're going to come back with more of this discussion with every one of you that is on the line. And you guys know how it works after the first half. If it does happen to knock you off, don't worry about it. Just call back in. The number is 347-989-8310. The smart ones just hang up and call right back in right now because they know the lines are full. Again, thank you to everyone that joined the show uh, for the first half. Thank you, for Patrice, for coming on the show. And hopefully we'll be able to do that again. We're talking about something as simple as should be. Blacks be able to discuss what's going on in black communities out in the open as I do, or is it a problem? Numbers 347-989-8310. I'm Tommy Sotomayor. You know who I am. You know what this is. This is your world. Stay tuned for more Your World, My Views, the realest show on internet radio with your host, Tommy Sotomayor. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. For other people inside of the chat rooms, y'all know what happens. The show goes off for a second. It comes right back on. So I look forward to it. If you're on YouTube, same thing will happen. It'll go off for a second. It'll come right back on. So go out and get you a drink. Well, not no, something that's going to get you drink, drunk, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Go out and get you something, and we'll be right back. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.